Oh man, I like how these people look. Yeah. Hi everybody. Yeah, Greetings! Oh my goodness! <laughs> I wasn't ready! I, <laughs> I told them that! <laughs> <laughs> Greetings. Hi everybody. <laughs> Hey, it, this is a better start than last time when my mic was muted, but I had the stream unmuted and Craig's <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day echoed like five <laughs> times before I realized what the fuck was going on. Yeah. Nice. Ace. Yeah. That stream was just filled with problems. It really Extra was. streaming everyone. It's almost like we've been doing this for a year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh lordy. We're great at this. We're we, great at stream. Yeah. Uh, but at, at least I can tell you guys that our volume is good. Oh good. Uh, is our volume good? No. Uh, uh. <laughs> I, th I said I can <laughs> tell you that, not that I would. <laughs> Uh, but we're we're wrapping up Hive Swap Friendsim today. I'm fucking excited. Yeah, man. Next week will be Act Two. Act Two. Okay. Damn. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, volume seventeen. Teen and Tech Acerbic. Ooh. Ripped lady. Ah, uh, yes. This is it, fellas. Another night of laughter and camaraderie. Another night of joy and communion with some totally normal teens who would never... Ha <laughs> ha you're just kidding, idiot. You're still on Alternia. You just know one of these miserable chuckle fucks is around here somewhere. Waiting for the exact right moment to inundate you with another disgusting dose of friendship. Who is going to be the author of your destruction on this accursed evening? <sighs> Daria Joan Jett <laughs> and Nikki Mula. Oh man, these are wow. I ladies. I like I guys ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Girls? Oh. <laughs> could, could it be? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'll, I'll take Daria. Tell us about yourself, Daria. Yeah. You look cool. That's way cooler than me. I'm kind of intimidated. <laughs> uh, your feet drag as you walk, every limb heavy and slow, and your thoughts are cloudy and dull. Your palm husk is filled with unanswered texts. You feel guilty about this in the back of your mind where real feelings live crammed together because the front of your mind is too busy being lethargic and numb. Being a bad friend goes against the core tenets of your beliefs, but answering texts just seems like too much effort. Fucking tell me about it, dude. It, it do be like that sometimes. Yeah, it really do. Like this, Just this morning, I had texts from friends that I looked at them and groaned a little. Yeah. <laughs> I love my friends, but man, do we talk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're not sure where this particular malaise came from, just that the usual friend-making animus that drives you is still there, but it doesn't feel strong enough to overcome how tired you are of everything else. You can't quite remember how it felt to care that much about companionship and camaraderie. In fact, right now, you can't remember how it felt to care about much of anything. Your thoughts drift to fantasies of driving your car into the uninhabited Alternian desert until you run out of fuel and perhaps letting the sun have its way with you. It could be part of that feeling that you've almost made all the friends there are to make, and that there's little left for you to do on this planet. It could be weeks of trauma catching up and sinking you into depression to protect you from thinking about it all. Either way, it just feels like so much effort to do anything, and you'd sort of welcome Oblivion if it showed up right now to offer its sweet embrace. Your listless walking has taken you into a familiar neighborhood. 
Ah, the cerulean part of town. You smile as you reminisce, sweet memories peeking through like beams of sunlight through the fog of your apathy. Not far from here is Malik's Hive, with all of its hacking equipment and charming upper-middle-class atmosphere of entitlement and complacence mixed with vaguely socially aware concern. And though you've only seen pictures of it on Chitter, you know that Remelay's hipster art studio slash hive is also in the, in the neighborhood. And one block over is Ardata's place, which gave you your gruesome and troubling introduction to Alternian social mores. One taught you love, one taught you patience, one taught you pain. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, something. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. The hive you're closest to is actually Elwards, and as you shamble closer, you realize that a lot of other trolls seem to be converging here, too. Fishing out your palm husk, you see that the unread message from Elward is an invitation to a party at her place. Looking around you... <clears throat> Looking around you, you feel a flame of your old desire to meet and greet rekindling in your heart. There are plenty of trolls here you haven't met yet. Plenty of opportunities for friendship. It's the kind of jam! Hell yeah, <laughs> man. I'm about this. Yeah, I like this song a lot. Yeah. The now roaring fire in your belly feels a little artificial, like someone just injected you with friend-making hormones to flood out your regular human melancholy. But you're not going to complain, because this is vastly preferable. As you're walking briskly towards Elward's hive, you spot a troll lurking in the shadows by Elward's back door. Curious, you approach, and when you get closer, you can spot the Jade Green in her outfit. Although there's not much of her blood color in comparison to what most other trolls seem to be, uh, seem to sport, because she's mostly wearing black, and spikes, and black spikes. Ugh, it's you. You walk to us. <laughs> <laughs> Guess it makes sense you'd be here. You're probably friends with Elward, huh? Whatever. Yeah, you're friends with Elward, but you didn't come here for the party. You're just in the neighborhood. You try to mimic Daria's disaffected slouch. It's not hard, as you can just channel... The you from about 60 seconds ago, who is very disaffected indeed. From the approving arch of Daria's eyebrow, you think you're doing a pretty good job. Yeah, parties are lame. Most parties are anyway. This one might be cool. Elward's pretty cool. Are you an Elward? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I mean, she seems alright. I don't think she's that cool. I just think her hair and clothes and personality don't completely suck at all. Aww. Hair Ramona flowers go off. <laughs> <laughs> you tactfully don't comment on the green blush to Daria's cheeks when she's talking about Elward, nor the way she keeps glancing at the door like she's hoping someone will invite her in. She's clearly trying to sneak into this party and doesn't have an invite. When a branch snaps in the bushes, Daria startles and looks around shiftily. You wonder if she's supposed to be out on her own this far from the caverns at all. I'm not a baby like Wanshi. So what if I snuck out? The cloister rules are so lame. Bronia is so lame. I can't believe Elrod used to hang out with her. But I guess if she hadn't befriended Bronia, then I never would have met her. It's hard to meet non-jade bloods in the caverns. All the time you're underground with nothing but loose eye and grubs and the same stupid jades every day. It sucks down there. Daria's imitation grub horn bracelets clunk as she uh, folds her arms over her chest. Her heavy makeup makes it look like her eyes are twin black holes, where all sense of fun and caring about things might go to die. <laughs> <laughs> She's giving you a mark contrast from how Bronia talked about the caverns with the peace and quiet and safety they offered compared to Alternia's surface. And other than that time Lanera nearly killed you in a cave, and that time you were nearly trampled by a rampaging Lucis, you remember liking the caverns. You would think that. Don't know why I thought you might be cool. You might be friends with Elward, but you're also friends with... Ugh. 
Bronya and Lanera. They're the two most boring trolls on the planet. You can't help but feel slightly defensive of your friends. Sure, Lanera is... Lanera, but you wouldn't call her boring. And Bronya is very fond of rules, it's true, but she can hang. Ugh, whatever. This conversation is dumb. I don't care if you can't get me into the party. Nothing matters anyway. <laughs> Just make your stupid choice and get on with it. <laughs> Damn. Okay. <laughs> I guess she knows. Yeah. Um. I she do. She might honestly have a better time going home. Yeah, I feel like if we go in, the same thing that happened when we went to the close place with Elward is gonna happen. She's gonna, like, yeah. see Elward and be like, alright, later, I'm gonna go hang out with the cute girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's suggest she goes home and maybe takes us with. Yeah. Thinking about the Jade Blood Caverns has got you really missing them. The quiet monotony, the cute little grubs, the dank air and darkness. You can't think of a better place to lie down and have a depression nap, perhaps even a depression coma. So you straighten up out of your slouch and tell Daria that regardless of her opinion on Bronya and how cool or lame she is, those cloister rules probably exist for a reason, right? Maybe the two of you can both go back to the caverns, together. Oh, I like the expression on this sprite. Yeah. Fine, be a goody two strut pod and tastements. I'm gonna go somewhere where it's not so lame. Oh. Alright. She just We're didn't lame. Like it. <laughs> we're lame. We're lame. Oh no, I can't believe we're lame. <laughs> oh god. It's my worst fucking believe, nightmare. I can't believe the, the mall goth thinks we're lame. <laughs> <laughs> fucking brutal. Ouch. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. hard. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, what the hell? It's not your job to keep anyone in line, and it's not like you have a great understanding of why the older Jade Bloods need to stay underground anyway. If Daria wants to sneak into parties and get into trouble, who are you to say no? Daria expresses no pleasure at your decision to get her into the party. She just shrugs and rolls her eyes. You shrug and roll your eyes back. You can play the role of a disaffected teen with the best of them. You take her around to the front door. Hey, you're looking forward to seeing Elward again. When you meet her, uh, when you met her, you didn't have nearly as many friends as you do now, and in retrospect, you know you came off as kind of sycophantic. Wouldn't it be great if you could introduce Elward to the new, popular, and knowledgeable you? As you're walking up the steps, a huge shadow dwarfs yours. You look up to see Chahut of all trolls grinning above you. Hey! Yeah! You want me to be the shadow dwarf? Yeah! Sure. Yeah. Well, hey, little one. I remember you. And who is this new little one you've got with you? Chahut switches her interest from you to Daria, grinning down at her. Daria isn't huge for uh, isn't huge for jade blood or anything, but she seems absurdly tiny with Chahut looming down at her like that. Her face remains impassive and bored, but she scuffs one of her big black boots on the ground and twists one of her spiky bracelets around on her wrist. Cute. Don't see many little jades outside of the caverns. Always found greenies fascinating. So devoted to the continuation of the species. What a holy mission. Jahut moves slow and lazily like she <laughs> has all the time in the world and no conceivable reason to rush, and reaches out to pat Daria's shoulder. She lets her hand linger, one claw resting against Daria's neck. <laughs> this that's is a, interesting. That's a little gay. <laughs> a little bit. Just a little. I like Daria's right here. Yeah. <laughs> and 
she's like, I'm cool and disaffected. I'm cool and disaffected. I don't care. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. And also, to her, like, she's not doing anything threatening per se, but she's so big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't it a dangerous proposition to be so far away from your green brothers and sisters? Unless you're hiding something in there, in those pretty veins. Okay. <laughs> a slimy chill runs down your spine. Daria seems frozen to the spot, staring straight ahead at Chahut's bosom in front of her. You Not her boobs! <laughs> 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 uh... You think Chahut is joking, but it can be hard to tell with clowns. Their humor is just so much more highbrow than anyone else's. Sure. Just joking. This looks like a good party. Evers Elward is too blasphemous for my taste sometimes. See you bo both of you little ones inside. And then she ambles Fucker. away. <laughs> Bending down to duck inside the door to the party. You hear party sounds, music and laughter, and clinking drinks, and what could be the sound of someone being murdered, which qualifies as party noise on this planet. Then the door swings shut again, and you and Daria look at each other. Daria's heavy makeup can make it hard to read her expression, but you can still tell that she's rattled. Uh, you know what? It looks like this party is filled with lame conformers. <laughs> uh huh. All these high bloods that, bl that buy into the system and do what they're told, even Elward. We can find something better to do somewhere else. Uh huh. <laughs> sure, honey. <laughs> yeah, to hell with this party. You're down to find your own fun, especially if that means not putting Daria in the way of potentially murder-happy clowns. As you saunter away from the party, you realize that Daria is looking at you expectantly. Well... You got the reputation for being all unconventional and weird and rebellious. Everyone seems to think you're like totally fucking with the conventions of society or whatever. Have you got any suggestions for cool shit to do? God, you've sure felt a lot of pressure to be quirky since word has spread about your manic pixie dream alien ways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not like you're trying to be a vehicle for other characters to project onto, assisting in character growth and insight for those around you while your impulse decisions and carefree ways somehow keep you yourself stagnant and forever unchanged. It just seems to sometimes be like that. Anyway, you're tired and it's daunting to have a punk teen expecting you to come up with suggestions for cool stuff. You have a feeling she's just going to shoot down whatever you suggest. You rack your brain, trying to think of anywhere from your many adventures that Daria might like. Your think pan comes up with Zilch and Squat, and she's starting to look bored with you. Confessing that you can't think of anything is probably an option if you want Daria to be your friend. Uh... And as exhausted and disillusioned as you feel with your socialite routine, you like her and you want to bond. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know, what do you want to do? I really want Wander the Streets like Hoodlums on a t-shirt for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> um, we feel like she's going to complain either way, right? Wasn't that actually our, our reasoning with Tizzy? <laughs> we felt like she was going to so. complain no matter what we said. <laughs> um, and this song bops. Yeah. Uh, I guess we could try asking what. She, well, I mean, will she think it's lame if we're indecisive? Yeah, she. she hmm. It seems like she wants us to take the lead. Yeah. Uh, alright, let's. Let's 
I mean, wandering the streets could get you killed in Alternia, but let's not pay attention to that. Yeah, she wants to be cool and rebellious. Yeah. Maybe a, a, de- like... a near-death experience will fucking scare her straight. Yeah, I feel like near-death is cool. Yeah. Also. <laughs> if, it, if all else fails. <laughs> Uh, here's the thing. Your weirdest and best adventures have happened to you when you're, uh, when you've decided to be spontaneous and just let shit happen. Adventures and coolness are both hard things to plan. Mm. So what are you suggesting that we just wander? Her derisive tone makes you hesitate, but well, yes, that's exactly mm. what you're suggesting. That is what we said. Yeah. Daria gives you a long, considering look. You hold your breath. Then she shrugs. Okay, whatever, sure. Sound like I have anything better to do. Well, how's my volume, by the way? Because I... Uh, pretty good on my it. end. Alright, making sure. Let's just go. Hmm. Uh, you meander <laughs> th- <laughs> uh, through the well-maintained Cerulean streets heading downtown. This seems like a good opportunity to get to know your potential friend, so you start by asking her some fairly simple questions. Uh, how am I? I don't know. I'm forbidden to leave the stupid caverns. And as a jade blood, all I have to look forward to is a life of being forbidden to do things. How do you think I am? How do you think I am? Okay. You try to walk that one back a little. It sounds like Daria is unsatisfied with the jade blood setup. That's one way to put it. You could also say that I'm unsatisfied with, like, the whole setup of my species. You've been here for a while now. Don't tell me you haven't noticed that every part of our society is transparent bullshit. You glance around because Daria is right. You've been around for a while, and that means you know enough to know that if the wrong people overheard this kind of talk, you'd both get culled on the spot. But everyone here seems distracted by their own nonsense. Cautiously, you concede that, yeah, you've noticed a certain bullshit aroma. (laughs) Yep, it all stinks. No one has any kind of real future except for the highest of the high bloods. And actually, I've heard that things pretty much suck for them, too. Some might say that purple bloods are the most disprivileged class of them all. Clown rights. Clown rights. <laughs> You're just going to continue to not comment on that one. Instead, you point, <laughs> <laughs> you point out that being a jade blood, Daria has a purpose beyond just growing up to become fodder in the Imperial Army, like you've heard other trolls mention. Surely that counts as a real future. Uh, don't get me started. Suffice to say, I'm not exactly hype about the purpose that I supposedly have. More like the purpose that was arbitrarily assigned to me. But it's not like I have a choice, and rebelling in any sort of real way would put me in danger of a culling. Life here is pretty much just hopeless. Damn. Wish you had a good counter-argument. You want to give her some words of comfort, but what can you even say? Daria's right. Shit's grim. At least you're honest. Thanks for not bullshitting me. You know, Monera said you were good to talk to about real stuff. I guess she's right. That's... huh. You're surprised that Linera is going around talking about you, saying positive things even. But you're more surprised that Daria is bringing her up in a non-derisive context. You didn't know that (laughs) Daria and Linera were close? Ugh, no gross. (laughs) I hate Linera. Oh. Oh. 
And not in a romantic way. Okay. <laughs> or well. Okay. <laughs> anyway, never mind. <laughs> uh, Daria looks uh -huh. embarrassed and flustered and also pissed at you. At least you've gotten the subject away from how hopeless everything is, but still, you don't want this friendship to turn sour. As you're scanning your useless brain for a tactful subject change, you're saved by the footsteps of a new troll approaching. Hey! Hey, my girl! <laughs> and as luck would have it, you know this troll. It's Tizius, which makes sense because your meandering has taken you and Daria close to Tizius' favorite book hive. Uh, uh, is this another tired voice, Craig? Can you take her? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cool. Reading, right? Am I right, fellas? Am I right? What's the deal? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, it's you. What are you doing here? Here, hold on a sec. Let me crank you up a bit. Alright. You want me to get closer to the mic? Oh, no, I, I, I can Is turn your... Better? This is better. Oh, I turned your volume up in the Discord call. And it's all good, man. Are, are you sure? Is this not <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I don't even need to ask. Yeah, I'm still making friends with this jade blood. Searching for some dumb shit, no doubt. Don't let me keep you. Tizius looks just as exhausted as you remember. You don't want her to go just yet, because it's been a while since you've seen her, and you're always eager for an opportunity to catch up with a friend, especially one of the less murderous ones. <laughs> then you notice Daria eyeing Tizius' mug of unidentifiable liquid, and an idea occurs to you. You get excited, bouncing a, li a little on the balls of your feet as you introduce Tizius and Daria to each other. You explain to Tizius with a meaningful look that you hope, uh, you hope she'll interpret correctly that you and Daria were just conversing about how the more unjust aspects of Alternian society, on the more unjust aspects of Alternian society and how hopeless everything seems to be. What do you mean the more unjust aspects? Does Alternian society have aspects that are unjust? <laughs> I'm sweeps away sweeps into studying our legal systems and I haven't found any Daria makes a muffled sound that could be a laugh you t make your meaningful look more meaningful doesn't Tisius remember that conversation she had with you about justice and the shitty system the importance of possibly futile work to try and improve things someday pissing Man, oh. when did we become a rebellion recruiter? <laughs> Good question. Also, the lights in my room just flickered. Oh, oh nice. Oh. The Condis is hearing your talks of, dis of dissent. Oh, God. Dude, are you, She's coming is your power going to go out during the stream? I fucking hope <laughs> not. It shouldn't. Is it like... What's the... Hold on. I'm going to look out the window. What the fuck happened? Dude, it'd be so fucking funny if the stream got cancelled because Leo fucking died. I would be just... so sad. And this... It's just rain. It's not even a lot of rain. Luck just hasn't been great lately. Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> okay, I need to close the garage door, apparently. I'll be right back. <laughs> mm. Oh! My charger fell out of my wall and it made a big thud. Oh, that's cool. So then, how's your day been? Uh, pretty good. Uh, can you tell can you tell uh Shad that in the chat so that he knows that I'm having a better day than him and that Leo will draw me the Garfield picture? I completely forgot what you were talking about for a good minute. Like, what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> what is she babbling about? You know, I'm sure to be out to any outside. You know those pictures. That like 
they almost look cohesive when you don't focus on them, but as you like look more into all the details, you can't make anything out. Yeah. That's what that sentence was. Yeah. <laughs> you said words to me, and I just nothing like clicked. I was just what the fuck did you just say to that me? Was, it was like three layers of inside joke. <laughs> yeah. So great for a stream. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what was I? Uh, it's, uh, pissing. That's where I was. Right, pissing. Pissing. Uh, excuse me. I really need to put a mute button. That's very rude. <laughs> Tizia squints at you and then takes a long slurp from her mug. Right. Yeah, I remember. You wave your hand around. Now we're talking. Tizius is one of the few friends you've made that seems to not only notice that shit was fucked, but wanted to dedicate herself to unfucking the shit as much as she could. Hmm. Of course, many of your dear friends try to make the world a little better in various ways, uh, in various clumsy, interpersonal, distinctly Alternian ways. You think of Chixie striving for her music, even when it pits her against High Bloods, the baffling but sweet ways that Connell and Azdaja and Galek and Tagora care for each other, and Fazer's commitment to political... Wait, why did you think of that guy? He's a total <laughs> shill for the Condus. Hmm. Huh. Uh-huh. Strange. Anyway... Tisius has a big picture mentality and a cause that she believes in, and the simple fact that she hasn't yet completely given up is inspiring. Daria is struggling with feelings of despair, so maybe Tisius could talk to her about the work that she's been doing. What? No, I'm not struggling. <laughs> mm, it's whatever. I don't even care. Yeah, alright, hun. Alright, sure. It's okay to have feelings, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Daria kicks at the ground sulkily. Tizius looks her over, her eyes lingering on the jade symbol on her shirt and her spiky black jewelry, then sighs. God, this is this is just the group of three tired idiots. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. For this volume. Sure, you don't care. I went through that a phase of telling myself that too. I thought it would make it easier to deal. But nah. Tizius pauses for another mug slurp and you think she might be enjoying the opportunity to monologue a little bit. Daria huffs. The only thing that helps, and I'm not even sure that helps is the right word for it. Is finding something to work on in your own little corner. My phone did just meow, huh? Nice. Oh. I oh, didn't hear it yet. <laughs> yeah, cool. To try and make shit feel a little less. But there's nothing I can do in my corner. It's pointless to pretend otherwise. And that goes for everyone. Like, this whole system's designed to help high blood stamp out dissent in every corner. One troll can't do anything against something like that. Tizius' eyebrow twitches as she stares at Daria, clearly peeved at being interrupted. Uh-oh. This could be going better. Well, no shit. <laughs> what do you take me for? I'm not saying all it takes is standing up and fighting for right, what's right, or some something stupid like that. That's obviously a surefire way to get cold. Well, then what are you saying? How can you even know what whatever piddly little action you're taking will change anything? I can't tell you the future, dumbass. Okay. I won't give you a guarantee that any kind of action will be taken be taken will ultimately be effective. You have to decide for yourself that it's worth to try anyway. 
Why would you think it's worth it when everything around us confirms that nothing will ever change? I can't believe you're calling me a dumbass when that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Tizius look, looks like she's ready to throw the contents of her mug in Daria's face. Knowing trolls, she'd probably follow up the uh, follow up with the mug itself. This is not the conversation you'd hoped for at all. Yeah, getting the the nihilist to comfort the sad teenager might not have been the best idea. Hmm. Who knows? This could turn this could turn black or ashen at some point. Let, let's not give up yet. <laughs> you make a good point. Uh, you step in yeah, before I mean... things can get any more heated. You tell Tizius that you're sorry and that you didn't flag her down just so that just so that her ideas could get shit on. You turn to Daria, who is staring at both of you with a defiant look on her face and a stubborn set to her jaw. This kid. She's just so dead set on rebelling against anyone who tries to tell her anything with even the faintest whiff of authority. You really thought that maybe all that product uh, all that attitude could be channeled into something productive that would also help her feel better and possibly even give her a sense of purpose. You're not mad, just disappointed. Ow, my wrist cracked. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, give yeah. me that look, okay? I was just stating my opinion. <laughs> God. but I guess I could have been less of a bone bulge about it. You're pleasantly surprised that Daria more or less apologized. Tizius looks mollified, too. This shit just makes me so angry. Angry and sad and helpless. Like, I don't even know what to do with myself when I really have to think about it. Bingo, unfortunately. I feel the same way. I don't think there's any getting around the helplessness. But what I was trying to say is that working on something that might help to fix things someday makes that feeling a lot a little less powerful. So what you're saying is just about making yourself feel better. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Well, when you put it like that, it sounds bad. I believe I'm working on things that might affect change someday, even if I'm not around to see it. But also, yeah, most of the time it helps me sleep at night too. You can tell Daria is a bit disappointed by this, like she doesn't trust that political rebellion can go hand in hand with making the rebels feel good about themselves. You point out that whether or not Tizius feels good about her work doesn't make the work itself any less effective. Yeah, in the end, the universe doesn't care about how I feel. I'm just one troll trying to do the right thing. Or at least, the okay thing. For its own sake, even if it might ultimately be futile. What the fuck else are we gonna do on this bridge of an Alternia? You got me there. I'm bored of all the time and there really isn't anything cool to be down in the cavern. I guess during the downtime in my training I could, I don't know help you out, maybe. Not that I have anything to offer other than the book hive and the jade posters. And jade posters. Access to that might actually help with my research, actually. Give me your number and we can talk. Hey! Hmm. Is it just your imagination, or does Tizius look a smidgen less tired? The bags under her eyes less baggy, and her back a little straighter. And you think the corners of Daria's lips might be very slightly quirked up. Daria turns her possibly a smile from Tizius to you. This was cool, I guess. 
or at least not so bad. But I don't know if it counts as something cool. So I guess you could keep hanging out until more shit happens. Whoops. You know Daria well enough by now to recognize this for the ringing endorsement that it is. You're about to happily agree when Tizius pipes up. I'm just heading home from studying, but I'm not tired yet. If you wanted a third wheel to drag along. Absolutely. Three-way friendship combo bob. Victory. Nice. We did it. I think any route where we can hang out more with Tizius is a win. Yeah. <laughs> that was delightful. Yeah. All right. I have placed another heart sticker on my phone. Nice. The last one started getting scratched off. Yeah. Cool. I just keep adding new ones after they kind of get like too white to discern all the colors. <laughs> so at some point, there's just gonna be like an inch, like high stack of stickers. Hell yeah. <laughs> Nikki Mula, mm. strong lady. Yeah, get those muscles. Oh, jeez. Okay. That's a... Alright. That's different. <laughs> Ooh, nice song, though. Yeah. Uh, dim lights, the din of a roaring crowd, and the smell of horribly overpriced and nauseating concessions. Even across galaxies, timelines, and perhaps even universes, there's still something deeply familiar about a sporting arena. SMASH YOUR MOTHER HONKING FACE IN! There's also something deeply familiar about sports fans. Aww. Oh, hey! Our little gremlin. Uh... Yeah. La. Such a shame oh, having- sorry, sorry, I can do her. I was doing- I passed a vow. <laughs> um... <laughs> La. Such a shame having seats next to the purple. They can be so crude and boorish, don't you agree? Jahut wouldn't be nearly this loud. Usually. <laughs> you find yourself here attending a wrestling show, or a display of muscular theater, to use the troll terminology, thanks to mm. the benevolence of one Amicia Erden. Uh, she won the tickets in a raffle and excitedly invited you to come along. You agreed, with some reservations that you quickly expressed. Uh, she was quite disappointed, but eventually agreed not to kidnap you and keep you locked up as a living paint jar since your buddies and all. What a sweet friend. You have to admit, though, muscular theater isn't really your thing. It's as over-the-top and ridiculous as human wrestling, which makes it perfectly entertaining enough, but it's also, well, a lot more violent. Participants aren't expected to die, as far as you can tell, but you've already seen a few get wheeled off on futuristic hover structures with injuries you're not sure they could survive. Oh gosh, she nearly got impaled there. Every match tonight is taking place within a chain link cage. Spikes surround it on both the outside and inside and jut out occasionally from the places where the wires cross. The overall design, in addition to ensuring maximum bloodshed, seems uh, to keep both the wrestlers inside and the audience out. Ironically, it might be safer this way. The current combatants are some olive blood named the Huntress and a purple blood calling himself Cull Pits. <laughs> Interestingly to you, there is nothing clown-like about him at all. It's almost inconspicuous how unclowny he is, if only due to the absolutely ridiculous amount of clown content you have imbibed in the presence of other purples. No, no, it looks like he's got a Hatchet Man tattoo. <laughs> That's pretty clowny, yeah, man. It's, I mean, he's rather clowny. The grease paint speaks volumes. It does. The two fighters appear to be nearly evenly matched. The olive troll ducks and weaves amid blindingly fast punches from the purple, slashing at him with grand grandiose arm gestures, trying to overwhelm him with a barrage of small attacks. Every one of his punches hits hard enough to knock her down, but she always springs up before he can land a second hit, 
She's incredibly steady on her feet and quicker than he. In fact, you get the distinct impression that the Olive Troll is holding back, presumably so as to avoid inciting the crowd. Thus far, you have not seen a single match in which the lower-blooded opponent, opponent triumphed over a higher-blooded foe. I must admit, this match is a lot more tense than I was expecting. But I hope it ends soon. There's supposed to be a really famous muscular theorist, uh, theorist performing next. Her name is Nikki Mula, and she hasn't ever lost a fight. I heard she even beat a Violet Blood once. Nikki Mula, huh? Now that's a name you could befriend. She must be <laughs> as, a big, uh, as big a deal as Amicia makes her out to be because she uses her real name instead of some ridiculous made-up nonsense like John Cena or Hulk Hogan. <laughs> oh, look, look! He got her, he got her! You flinch. The purple blood finally managed to get his quarry in his clutches, and he lifts her up by the face, digging his fingers into her skull until you hear a sickening crunch, and she collapses to the ground, panting heavily. She can't bring herself back up to her feet, and the announcer calls the match to uproarious applause from the audience. Two trolls enter the cage and start dragging her out, while the winner basks in the audience's affection. The Olive Blood looks like she'll probably live, but she's got a dent in her face that probably isn't coming out, ever. Mm -hmm. Ugh. All of a sudden, you think you really, really need to, uh, get a bathroom. You mean, use the snack. You mean, you'll be, you'll be right back. <laughs> okay, come back soon. The fight is giving you all sorts of ideas for a new painting. Is that a fucking Mr. Mime? Wait, where? Right here, in the far left. Far left. Far left, the the topmost before you can't see any faces. Oh! Yeah. No, he's he just bald. Looks, he's just yeah, bald he looks, with horns, but like he looks one, like a yeah. fucking Mr. Mime. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking stupid. <laughs> um. Uh. You quickly make a break for it, jostling your way through the stands and toward the exits of the arena, but before you make it, a voice calls out to you, some slick-haired and slick-finned violet-blooded guy, wearing a full suit with a tacky flame pattern on it. Hey you, alien. Me, you ask, pointing to yourself nervously. No, the other alien. <laughs> you swing your head around wildly, looking for the other alien. This bit plays out predictably for a while before you both get on the same page, which is that you are the alien whose attention he wants. You looking to make a little extra buck? No, not really. You never spent all that money you won with the Azdaja. Okay, how about fame? Frankly, you are probably already too famous for your own good. Uh, <laughs> friendship? Oh shit, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Sighing with relief, the troll leads you backstage whilst explaining that he is a promoter for this wrestling ring. One of the trolls that was supposed to perform tonight was eaten by some plant called a troll-devouring catchy grabber. Of course. <laughs> As such, famed muscular theatrist Nikki Mula has been left with nobody to fight. You will be that nobody. Or somebody. Uh, an alien will bring in all sorts of media attention and controversy, which of course means big bucks for him, and friendship for you. Nikki is so friendly, he says, in a tone so insincere even your friendship-addled brain refuses to believe it. It's okay, <laughs> you've met worse. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, he takes you into a back room with- is she just like- What's happening? She's moving the whole thing she's sitting on. Damn. Just that jacked. Yeah. <laughs> um, he takes you, you into a- leg. Yeah. Hmm. yeah pirate. <laughs> he take, <laughs> takes you into a back room, which seems to be full of performers waiting for their turn on stage. There are all sorts of trolls here, muscular and sweat-soaked, blue-blooded more often than not.
He has nipples and grub scars. Wait. Motherfucker oh. in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Why does he have nipples? <laughs> Why do you have nipples, sir? They're tattoos. They're tattoos. <laughs> 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 Only high bloods have nipples. They're like an aesthetic choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. One troll in particular stands out to you from her severe expression to her softly pulsating robotic leg to the fact that she's the only troll with a fully illustrated sprite. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright. Hey. <laughs> sure, man. Um... She's currently doing bicep curls with a set of spiked weights, huffing with exertion. When the promoter approaches, she looks up with a scowl. I can't help but notice, um, you know, you ever have the bookshelves in the library where all, um, octagonal? Yeah. Octagonal. Why aren't the lockers? <laughs> that is a so, good question. I mean, I think it makes a lot less sense for shelves to be that shape, but cubbyhole lockers in that shape would actually work. Yeah. Uh, they are, but they're standing up. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> We're only seeing the one face. Oh. <laughs> See, I'm smart. I, <laughs> I know how to bullshit my way out of this. Galaxy brain. <laughs> Hussy level mm. bullshitting. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I spent this whole time trying to think of a voice and I immediately forgot it. Nice. I'm just gonna do something gruff. Okay. I'm busy. He begins to explain that he has brought a new challenger for her to face, but she cuts him off and stands up. She isn't as tall as you expected, but damn if she isn't dense, packing more brawn than any other troll you've met. Do you know what happens, sister, to people who disturb my preparations? Do you want to? Experience the bone crushing the torso shattering impact of these ladies right here. <laughs> she flexes. God, those muscles are huge! The promoter tells her that she really doesn't need to keep up the act. There's no cameras back here. She gives him a stern look, which distinctly suggests that she has never dropped kayfabe in her life. What? I believe that's just character, basically. And has so no I'll intention of there. starting now. Wait, no, fuck. I didn't open a new tab. Uh, hold I on. Just... Hey, definition. Professional wrestling is... In professional wrestling, it's a factor convention of stage performances as genuine or authentic. Yeah, it's okay. a wrestling character. Yeah. It sounded familiar. Yeah. Make it quick. The promoter makes it quick. So, let me get this straight. You expect me... Me... To perform with... This... This thing? She seems less than impressed, which you find reasonable. Magnificent legs aside, you don't really look like the wrestling type. Don't you dare insult me, sister. I'd rather you pulled a rusty from the audience and subjected me to this humiliation. Oh, but you are more than just an audience member. For although you may be, you have the heart and soul of a wrestler. You heart have... and soul of anything as long as it gets us friendship. Yeah. You have long, much longer than about five minutes, you thoroughly assure her, waited for an opening such as this to reveal your true passion to the world, to come alive on stage and grapple and tumble with the best of them. For eons, you have thirsted for the chance to sing the song of sinew, the hymn of heft, the melody of muscle. Would that you could be blessed by the opportunity to live the life of the athlete, to perform alongside your hero, to show the world that you too love to do the muscly thing. Ah, that you might just... Okay, I get it. She glances over at the promoter, and then back to you. It does seem surprisingly articulate for a lesser being. But is it ready for a butt-clenching, 
flesh abrading, knuckle blistering, muscle ripping, smackdown from uptown. <laughs> I love that. Yes. <laughs> sure. Fuck me up. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you nod your head confidently. Blister my knuckles and abrade my flesh, you say. Let's get this smackdown started. You've got guts, at least. She turns to the promoter and gives him a curt nod. The match is on. Then she turns back to you. Now, sister. We need to discuss the show. I will make all the decisions and you will respond adequately to the storyline I present. It will be thus. The alien invader challenged me in an exhibition match to topple the Mightarchy. They fight valiantly, show an entertaining display of strength. But in the end, as is right and proper, the noble hue of the Hemospectrum, the nobler hue of the Hemospectrum, prevails again. <laughs> she starts flexing and showing off for an imaginary audience before turning back to you. Any questions, sister? Yeah, yes, actually, you do have a couple of questions. First, will you die? No. Unless you're partic particularly disgustingly weak, in which case, maybe. <laughs> Such is the risk we take, we who indulge in that most noble and dignified of sports. I was willing to give my leg up for this craft. Is your life such a heavy price to pay for a tale that will transcend us and be remembered in the an annals of muscular history? I like this sprite. Yeah. Is it sister? Also, how does she know what a sister is? That's a good question. <laughs> well. It's rhetorical. Right. Secondly, when she says exhibition match... It's a muscular theater term. Referring to a match stage for the entertainment that does not affect one's ranking on the flex ladder. <laughs> we will not be sparring in the nude. Such glorious displays of raw, chiseled physiques are reserved for the intergalactic troll limits. No, yeah, you got that. Mostly you were wondering if it meant the loser's head being ex exhibited on a pike or some other bloodthirsty nonsense. Do not <laughs> denigrate this noble sport with claims of savagery. Thirdly, you're getting the sense that she's going to be playing the heel, yeah? The what? You explained that in your own cultural equivalent of the muscular theater performance jet. Performers generally fall into the category of face or heel, wherein the face is the rule-abiding and sympathetic figure the audience is meant to root for, whereas the heel takes on a more aggressive and unlikable personality. That's rude. Don't say that to her, she's gonna kick your ass. What part of my personality is unlikable? Do you dare suggest, sister, that the audience won't be roaring in a thunderous applause and admiration as I conquer yet another pitiful foe! You tell her, you know what, she can be both the face and the heel, and you'll just be... Subjugated under my heel? Yes, exactly. Hey Moolah, chatting time's over, you're up! She jerks her head back at you and silently marches out of the room. You begin to follow, and the promoter directs you to your entrance on the other side of the arena. You wait nervously for your cue to enter. Boy, we sure are doing this. Well, folks, we've had yeah. some technical difficulties, but here comes the match you've all been waiting for. Yeah, you will do anything. Yeah, for <laughs> friendship. Mm. Wearing the belt of champions and a leg of her own design, she's ready to gut the competition. A paragon of power, a lady of legwork. A true blue roof annihilator in the making. Clap those hands and activate your screech crevices. It's Nikki Moolah! 
Nikki approaches the cage to thunderous applause, raising her arms and soaking in all the praise. <laughs> she flexes and poses as the audience throws glasses of milk at her, which shatter uselessly around her steely frame. This appears okay. to be a common ritual for her. Alright. She steps through one of the cage doors and it slams shut behind her, locking tight. With her arms crossed and her teeth firmly gritted, she awaits you. As the announcer begins a new intro speech, you step forward. And in the other corner, frail in stature, weak in knees, wearing a perpetual look of befuddlement, we have some messed up low blood alien! How has this absurd mockery of life not been called yet? Perhaps only so fate could lead them to their thrashing at the bloodthirsty hands and barbed foot of the Grand Nikki. A decent portion of the crowd boos at you during your approach, which you find unsurprising. You have to dodge a hail of old boots and rotten fruit. Somebody throws an entire piano at you. Relatively unfazed, you enter the ring and hear the door close behind you. So... You've come here, alien, to prove your kind superior to the unbreakable, unstoppable troll species. Yeah, you shout. Your kind is so superior to trolls. And you, their emissary? Does this creature look superior to you, my theater enthusiasts? She turns to the audience, throwing out a hand and gesture to you. They boo. Is this sorry specimen the plat the best this planet can offer? More boos. You counter that you came more than prepared to tackle the uh mighty archy? Yeah, that. So, you claim to be prepared. But are you prepared to face these 24 inch slither noodles <laughs> slither noodles <laughs> she flexes so hard the announcer's <laughs> sleeves explode Whoa! <laughs> damn that's a hard flex yeah <laughs> so, so strong it. I'm impressed I'll crush you in a single blow you're expecting a referee to start the match, but then it occurs to you that there is no referee. Somewhere in the distance, a bullhorn sounds, which is apparently the signal to begin. Without taking her eyes off you, Nikki grabs the cage wall behind her and hoists herself up effortlessly, scaling it in reverse until she reaches the top. The announcer is screaming something about this move being called the Spiky Nikki. Once she finishes her ascension, Nikki deftly leaps from the edge of the cage and spins down towards you. Her body twists and writhes in multiple blindingly fast flips before her robotic leg comes slashing at you. Spend quite some time admiring her dazzling form before it occurs to you that you should probably move. You duck and roll forwards, feeling the point of her leg just barely graze your scalp. The announcer shouts, FIRST BLOOD, as you feel a light trickle down the back of your neck. Some members of the crowd are booing, presumably because they just noticed the color of your blood. Between the neon lighting and distance, they probably just think it's rust-colored and not a uh, mutant red, so at least you have that going for you. What you don't have going for you is time to think about, w about your next move, because Nikki pivots on her heel and charges at you. This time, she's going for a more theatric throw. Two powerful hands grab you and lift you over her shoulders, where you nearly gore yourself on one of her horns in your struggle to escape. You plant two hands on her back and push hard, and you are delighted to find that her grip loosens and you go tumbling over her back, landing with a clumsy stagger on your feet. You're not sure if she let you get away with that one for the sake of the show, or if you just slipped out of her sweat-soaked palms, but you're going to charitably assume the former. She turns to face you, grunting and baring her fangs. She charges, rearing back a fist and then sending it barreling toward your fr fragile human nose. You leap out of the way, only narrowly dodging it. 
All you've done is avoid me, coward! Where's your killer instinct? Do I scare you? A little bit. Are you loath to face my... True blue... Muscle-bound... Beauty? You take this as your cue to attack, and instead you run full tilt away from her. It doesn't fear carrying you, you swear. Fool! There's no right running or hiding from Nikki Mula. Stand and fight! She sprints towards you as you flee. The crowd is on tenterhooks. Nobody knows what you're doing, least of all you. But you think you can pull something cool out of this. You leap at the cage wall, barely dodging the spikes that line it, and use the slight amount of give in the chain link wires to springboard you off. With an exuberant grin, you go flying towards her, arm held out for a classic clothesline maneuver. Then you collide with her own arm and whop! Oh. Oh! When you wake up, you are lying on what appears to be an exercise mat. You can feel a telltale throbbing sensation in your face that indicates a black eye. The rest of you, thankfully, doesn't feel particularly hurt. You might get along with Lanera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nearby, you can hear the huff and puff of exertion. You glance over to s and spot Nikki training on one of those leg press machines you always saw in gyms, but never had the courage to attempt to use. She's wearing an exercise outfit, which, despite its vastly different purpose, looks almost exactly like the outfit she wore in the ring. It has all the functions a fitness aficionado would want. It's loose, it's breathable, and the artists don't have to draw a second set of sprites for it. <laughs> Respect. As soon as she notices you're awake, she turns to speak to you. She doesn't even stop her workout. You're finally awake, sister. I, um, Welcome to I my hive. How, sorry, I love how ever since Father, everything has become, like, even more, um, like, fourth wall breaking. Yeah. I mean, there was bits and pieces of it before, but since Father, it's like, it all just... <laughs> They're going <laughs> whole hog. Yeah. I have spent so much time. So much. Precious. Valuable time. Waiting for you to open your eyes. Oh god, how long have you been out? In five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> About 40 minutes. You. That's not so bad, is it? Perhaps, but only when compared to your abysmal performance in the ring. To be knocked out cold by your own attack. Wretched! I am an impossible foe to conquer, and yet even a Rusty has told me longer than in the realm of mortal combat. <laughs> you are weak, sister! Offensively so! She I'm going her... to need a drink after this! Yeah. Get some milk. She slams her foot forward with such velocity, the weight on the leg uh, on the leg press goes flying off and leaves a dent in the floor. Grunting, she stands, takes a long swig from a bottle, then approaches you with fire in her eyes. What do you have to say for yourself? You scuttle backwards, proffering only a sheepish smile. You're, uh, sorry, you guess? Hmm. I didn't bring you here for apologies. I'm trying to get, like, understand what her fucking, like, the beginning part of her sentence thing is. Like, what it's supposed to be. Belt buckle. Ah, yeah, yeah, I, I was thinking that, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. I brought you here to see your heart ignite with the will to improve. You are not a worthless being. Aw, you Aww. care. <laughs> You have a flair for the theatrics, an appreciation for the sport, and a shining soul filled of only the most intractable determination. You can be so much more than you are, sister. Aw, I thought she was gonna kill us. How kind. I could make you so much more. <sighs> Cast your gaze around you and behold. The the Bronizium. The Bronizium. 
Uh, you obediently cast said gaze around. This room is massive and littered with training equipment, as far as the eye can see. Most, uh, much of it resembles exercise machines like the ones you had in gyms back on Earth, but there is plenty more that looks far more alien and deadly. A treadmill, which appears to throw the runner into a vat of acid if they fall off. A series of swinging axes that would look at home in a dungeon. Three different varieties of Iron Ma Maiden, each more horrific than the last. This is presumably Nikki's personal workout studio, but you could easily mistake it for a torture chamber. You wonder if our Dada has ever considered a job as a personal trainer. Maybe you, you know, should I bring it up with the, her. Um, I love how the normal like weights over there are also covered in blood. Yeah. Like, there doesn't seem to be anything dangerous about them, they're just normal looking weights. Bash someone's head in with them. <laughs> A dang and romp a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. There are some who may be worthy of my ex expertise. It is here that I can forge them, just as I forge myself, into beings of adamantine strength. The journey will be harsh. If you are made of weaker stuff than I believe, you will perish in agony. But if your core is strong and your will of iron, yours will be an unquenchable might. She extends a hand to you, her jaw set. Join me, sister, and together we shall ascend! To... <laughs> to mescent height. To mescent. To mescent. To to mescent heights. Of muscular perfection! There's a look in her eyes that you have never seen before. One of hope, of faith. Her arm vibrates, muscles quaking. Do you take it? Yeah, let's take it, and then we die. Yeah. That's just how it's gonna end. Yeah, She's gonna shake true. our hand so hard, she just, like, fucking kills us. Yeah. <laughs> God, that would be an amazing way to end it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She holds her hand, her hand fucking shatters. <laughs> yeah. You take her hand, staring into those hopeful eyes. Oh, to see that deep sapphire blue fill with the glow of friendship. She squeezes your hand so tightly you feel your fingers fracturing. Excellent! I knew you had the spark. Now, to make a flame. To grind! And crush! And pumble the flint. Pumble. Until it bursts into a roaring blaze of strength. Ah, <coughs> oh, Jesus. Today I shall begin by testing at your limits. Come. She leads you to the treadmill and the deep bubbling pit of acid directly behind it. You nervously step on. We're going to measure your speed and stamina. Run until you can no run no longer. She starts up the machine. She gives you a nice breezy jogging pace at first, but the treads quickly begin to whir away at a blindingly fast rate. You're sprinting as hard as you can to keep up, holding desperately onto the arms of the treadmill. Come on, sister! Grip your teeth! Put some thrusts in you into it! If you're not uh, evacuating your acid track by the time if you're done, you aren't trying hard enough sweat beads on your forehead as you push your legs to the limit running like you're being chased by an angry drone your feet must be blurring like sonic the fucking hedgehog by now the treads are moving ever faster and you can almost feel yourself slipping got to hold ah yeah you lose your grip and go flying backwards, narrowly grasping onto the edge of the pit and dangling into it. Your toes singed by the acid. Youch! You, ho you hoist yourself up over the edge and roll to the side, hissing. Nikki stands over you, clucking her tongue. Top speed, 12 miles an hour. The same speed as the Kiwi. Yeah. That... that's good, right? For a bronze blood. Next test. She takes you from machine to machine in quick succession, each time commentating on your skill level. 
Uh, your biceps are as terrible as Rusty's, your lungs are gold at best, your legs an unexpected cerulean. All the while taunting you, encouraging you to push yourself further. <laughs> the desiccated corpse of my ancestor could do better than this! You struggle to deadlift a giant barbell made of dead monster skulls. Are you going to inject dismay fluid all night long, or are you going to woman up? You go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a punching bag that shoots sonic blasts at you uh, whenever you hit it. Shape up or be ejected to the nearest solar execution barge. You sob as she forces you to do 30 minutes of free-form jazzercise. <laughs> oh god. It's monstrous. Not jazzercise! Your jazz hands are terrible! No! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> By the time an hour is up, you are panting and huffing, desperate for a break. Nikki finally relents. Your reward for staying alive thus far. Stay hydrated, sister. She tosses you one of those protein shaker bottles that gym buffs are always chugging from. You regard the mixture with, uh, within curiously for a moment before throwing caution to the wind and gulping some down. When has imbibing alien substances ever hurt you before? But when the flavor hits your taste buds, you almost retch. Is this... Is this Gatorade mixed with milk? <laughs> Nutritious and delicious! You fucking no! monster! <laughs> oh my horrible. god. Delicious my ass! <laughs> oh my god. You have so much going for you. <laughs> <laughs> You keep chugging it. You need the liquids, foul though they be. Alright, lactose breakover. Let's continue! She next leads you over to one of those Iron Maidens. This one doesn't actually look spiked. It just has a blunt, bumpy surface on the inside. Get in. What? Get in, sister! <laughs> Oh no, don't bad end. You reluctantly step inside the Iron Maiden and the doors clamp shut around you. This thing is far, far too tight for you. L listen, we you told us about your Gatorade milk and we're still willing to be friends. Please don't kill us. <laughs> don't bad end, you're so sexy. <laughs> <laughs> This thing is far, far too tight for you, and the bumps are pressing into you from all sides, threatening to squeeze you away into nothing. You groan and push back against the walls, desperately trying to keep them from crushing you into little human waffle. Just when you think your strength is about to give out, the maiden opens. Pressure resistance, about olive level. These results are... Surprisingly... Adequate! Your potential continues to shine. Good work. This, yay. Uh, this halfway point seems to mark a change in her attitude as you continue to just barely persevere through everything she throws at you. Like a shake weight so shake weight so powerful it leaves you shuddering intermittently through a few through the next few exercises. Uh. Keep steady, sister. Don't lose heart on me now. A rowing machine that douses you with boiling water if you can't keep up the pace. Ouch. Go, go, go! We'll make a fuchsia medalist of you yet! Literally being chased around a field outside by a giant toothy monster. Don't you dare allow this thing the satisfaction of feasting on your bones! <laughs> After hours of this grueling work, you finally collapse. You think some of your bones are broken, your heartbeat is coming in quick and irregular pulses, and you can hardly breathe. Your vision blurs and shifts at the edges. God, you're amazed you haven't passed out yet. Get up! You glance w weakly up at Nikki, expecting her to be looking down at you with disdain, but instead you see her crouching down and offering you her hand, wearing a smile. You take her hand and she pulls you up to your feet. The look on her Aww. face now resembles pride, and when she claps a palm down on your shoulder, it only kind of hurts. 
You've done well, sister. Aww. I threw everything I had at you, and so you soldiered on with a head held high, even as your body broke beneath the weight. I have never seen such commitment. Such... Strength of heart and soul! Such... Dedication to the craft! Such... Appreciation for the most righteous of pursuits! You are no mere workout partner. You are a workout friend. Yay! A light blossoms inside you like the neighing of a horse. This feeling of power, of strength, of the bond between warriors. This is real and true, and this light will never, ever leave you. As you bask here in the satisfied and sweaty glow of a good workout, you realize that planets, universes, dimensions, realities, powers, principalities, and cosmos come and go, but being swole as fuck is forever. <laughs> Yay! Aww. That's so cute! Oh my God. <laughs> She's so proud of us. Ah, that was oh, good. Was great. I like oh. her. <laughs> that was delightful. Yeah, I like their characters this time. Oh man. So volume eighteen. Volume eighteen. Last one before the epilogue. Uh you crash-landed onto a planet called Alternia. You stagger from the wreckage of your ship. What? You were desperate for information, for provisions, and possibly a bit of medical attention. But most of all, you were desperate for... friendship. It's what you would say if you were written by a bunch of hacks who cared about the Arist Aristotelian ideal of narrative unity. I just clicked out of the window. Nice. Yeah. Great job, I'm proud of you. <laughs> Possibly. I'm proud of you for being able to pronounce Aristotle Ian. Yeah, it took <laughs> it took me a minute. I had to I had to stop and do you know, think with my brain. But you got there and I'm proud of you. Ye. Good job. Thank you. Uh, possibly you could make some reference to a circle being complete in a thoughtless and imbecilic manner. But we, we're all in this together, right? And we've all learned and grown enough to know that there's something deep and dark and absurd brewing beneath the surface. This really isn't about friendship anymore, is it? You've got enough friends. Now you need answers. You need... Oh, god damn it! This was just the intro screen. Oh. Lank. <laughs> and Barzum and Baisley. <laughs> Lank. Lank. I, I I think I can do a pretty good... He looks like he'd be suave. Right? Yeah. He's trying to be. Alright. I like him, so I... I'm worried about his root, but the last time... No, I, well, I mean, it, they only did it to me once, but still, the last time I was really into a character design, they made us piss ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> True. True. <laughs> but... It's fine. I like him before. <laughs> Please don't make me piss myself upon meeting him. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. Before what? we do this, I need to grab a drink, like my throat. Right. Jesus uh, Christ. Okay. Let's, let's be our B for a second. I also want to make a drink. Yeah, I'm gonna get like a snack because I did, I forgot to eat breakfast and lunch. I've had two Mr. Pips today, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, that's man. Uh oh, Leo. <laughs> I'm a healthy Everyone boy. Everyone remember eat. Oh, wow. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right, BRB. BRB, BRB everybody. everybody. This is where we'd run ads if we were monetized.
I'm back. Am I the first one back? I think so. I got a single piece of bread. Hello. Hello. Welcome back. Yeah. You're not back yet? Uh, don't think so. I just got back myself. Alright. Oh. Ugh. Yeah? No, I... I stink. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like that sometimes. I gotta take a shower after a stream. Mm. See, it's mostly because of, like, whatever the fuck's happening with, like, my, my arm. Mm. Like, the... Like, it's just making me smell really bad. <laughs> Rip. At least I got root beer. Ooh. Man, I could go for some fucking root beer. I'm, I'm trying to cut back on the soda, though. Mm. I should probably, too. But, meh. Yeah. Whatever. Someday, not today. <laughs> Well, while we wait I for- I return, Leela, okay. can you a piece of bread? Oh. I forget that yeah. you listen. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I got bread. <laughs> I'll make more food what? later, it's fine. Thank you. After yeah. After you to eat something. Yeah, I'll, I'll make, like, spaghetti and, and, uh, popcorn chicken. I want a burger. Oh, and we got oh, leftover oh. broccoli? Fuck yeah, dude. Oh. That sounds good. Yo, you're gonna go off after this. Texas toast. <laughs> Bro! I'm hungry. Can I, can I come over? Hell yeah. <laughs> Spaghetti night. Everyone is welcome. <laughs> Spaghetti night. Hell yeah. Oh, that sounds good. Alright. I guess we're all back then, though. Yeah. yeah. What's next on the docket? Oh, you're really feeling like going completely off the rails. So it's a good thing the first person to ping you on your palm husk is Lanera. That nutty bitch is exactly the sort of destabilizing influence your life needs right now. Nim? Oh. Hello. Uh, hello. My... Friend! <laughs> because that's what we are now! Friends! Cool, that's not a weird way, uh, that's not weird at all, that's not a weird at all way to talk to someone. You're really loving this one. You're not sure what it is, but you're posit- uh, you're positive whatever crackpot caper this loopy troll is about to rope you into is going to be a real humdinger. There's a sense of finality in the air, you can taste it. Lenera does you the courtesy of listening to you say all that shit, without getting super put off by how much of a freak you are. You said that, huh? Listen up. So I was thinking, since us becoming friends has worked out so well, I started to think maybe it'd be a good idea to give making more friends another shot after all, I guess. That's what I was thinking, so there's this party I was invited to. You got invited to a par- that's rude. Wow. That was rude of me. <laughs> oh, Leo, I can't believe you would say that. <laughs> Cancelled. I'm sorry, <laughs> Lenara. Please don't <laughs> yonder at me. That's a verb, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> You see, the fellow jades in my cloister always sneak out to go to these things. You gently suggest to Lanera that she should hurry it the fuck up. <laughs> We're ready for chaos. Yeah. Okay, so I'm nervous to go and I want a friend. 
come with me, okay? Is that so crazy? No, you don't think that's crazy at all. You think that sounds fantastic, actually. You don't ask for any details, because who gives a shit? Hey, I know this party. Back here. You show up on the block. We're not gonna talk about how you got there or whatever, because what a waste of time. You're just there. Linera's met up with you too. Linera mentioned there might be dancing, so you decided to really dress up for the occasion. Oh man, you went fucking nuts. You're wearing a cape and shit, but also like, fishnets, maybe a sexy bra if that's your thing. Whatever you happen to drudge out of some dumpster or another. I like how we have money and we're still going dumpster diving for clothes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. Honestly, you can imagine whatever you want here, but no, it's complete bullshit and you look like a total slut. Linera isn't wearing anything special because we would have had to pay someone to redraw all her sprites. <laughs> From the looks of it, you're heading over to somebody's hive party? You're rolling up on some kind of joint that, from past experience, you can now surmise as an alien domicile. It's pretty big and maybe belongs to someone on the blue end of the spectrum. Back here again. Is this block just where all the jade-blooded schoolgirls love to get down and dirty? It hits you Man, like I a- I almost set something on fire. Oh boy. Ha- wh I would've used a lighter to set something on fire. This isn't an accident. I almost com- purposely set something on fire, but then on my brain was like, no. Don't yeah, do that. You're inside. Yeah, because I'm fucking horrible. <laughs> I know. I know where I am. I'm glad you caught yourself. Put the lighter <laughs> away. I'm gonna- mm -hmm. I'm gonna confiscate your lighter. Mm -hmm. Uh, which one? Yes. Put all of them away. We're confiscating all of them. I'm confiscating all of them because then I also don't have to go out and get new lighters. You're stealing! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Listen, do you think these lighters are like fucking brand new, pristine, have full fuel? Fuck off. Oh, that reminds me. I I'll had a teacher who get. was like, I, would, I had a teacher who would like confiscate toys that kids bought to school, right? Which is pretty normal. But she'd give them to her own kids. Bro, so wow. Stealing. That's <laughs> unacceptable. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> That's straight up stealing. That's, That's so shitty. <laughs> It hits you like a bucket of ice when you realize whose hive you're walking straight towards this time. This is Ardata's hive. Absolutely not. Yeah. Oh, that's just great! Your friend Ardata! Boy, do you love Ardata. Can't wait to see her again! As you approach, you can immediately tell what kind of deal they have going on here. You can hear the tunes bumping from all the way down the block, and when you get near enough to see, there are obviously a bunch of teens passed out drunk on the lawn. This is a full-blown frat house rager. Definitely doesn't seem like Lanera's sort of scene. Or our data's. Yeah. That's because it isn't. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I'm doing this. You kind of can't either. You're already not even in the front door, and you can- uh, you're not even in the front door, and you can already feel the sweat pouring out of your armpits. This is going to be so much fun! Yeah. You pass all the smashed lawn teens and go up to knock on the front door. You have to rap on it a few times until the telltale sound of clicking heels faintly reaches your ears. The door opens, and you discover that the gracious hostess standing on the other side is none other none other than your best friend Ardata! Woohoo! She looks surprised to see you for only a moment before her face resolves into a wicked grin. Uh... Oh man, I'm both what? of these people, huh? I can yeah. do it! Um... <laughs> My, my, my. Look what the pervies dragged in. Back for more so soon, my sweet. You're not actually sure how much time has passed since you last ran into our data, but it doesn't see feel like it can be described in any metric by soon. I'd say pretty soon. Boulder wasn't that long ago. Yeah. You've been physically savaged so many times since then, you're not sure what you're blocking out, though. Uh, you tell Ardata you're really, 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 really glad to see her, because you totally are. You tell her you weren't expecting her to be hosting a party, though. Oh, I don't know if I'd call it a party. 
more of a friendly kickback of sorts. Sort of exclusive, really. All of the world's finest influencers are here. How exactly did you hear about my little shindig? While I certainly consider you to be one of my finest friends, I don't recall inviting you. <laughs> yeah, finest friends. You gesture vaguely to Lanera. She doesn't seem to know how to lie and immediately cracks under the pressure. Um, one of the other jades from my cloister told me to come. His name is Lanka, but I don't think he was invited either. Snitch! Uh, I get the impression we kind of always come out here. Basically, we're crashing, if that's okay? Oh my god. Well, of course. What's an informal soiree without a few entirely uninvited interlopers? I have to do Lanera's sprite, not Lanera, Arnada's sprites in order to get her voice. Yeah. <laughs> Lenera doesn't seem to know if she's being sarcastic or not, and you aren't sure if she is either, to be honest. You're like, are you fucking with us? And she's like, ho ho ho, mua ha ha ha, or whatever. Of course not. I just have but one question for you, my dears. Ardata beckons Ooh. you near. You obey her slavishly. Then she leans in close to your ear and intones. Do you hereby certify under penalty of law that you are of age to view adult content within your state of legal residence, have acknowledged the contents of this volume's accompanying mature content description, and are comfortable with the prospect of engaging with challenging or otherwise controversial fictional material? Uh... <laughs> uh... <laughs> Can I see those warnings? Am I gonna get, am I, am I gonna get banned on Twitch? <laughs> are, are you gonna are you gonna show me troll chitties? Content warnings, please. We could have got an ending by by sniffing Marvis's pits. Oh, we should go back and do that at some point. I want to see how he like bashes us. Yeah, he just immediately kills us. Um, yeah. <laughs> help. <laughs> help. <laughs> Wait, Whatever. what are we it's... about to see? Tell us. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Was that Should lightning? Should I look at this one? Does the dog die? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Um. Oh, that what? That ooh. What? That was some very loud thunder. Oh. Mm. Lil, is your power gonna go out? I hope not. Volume eighteen. Um. Blank. Uh, warning. Tell me the warnings. What's the warnings? Don't, <laughs> don't spoil it, just tell me what the warning is. Yeah. Oh, there's some buzzing now. Uh, yeah, that is some funky buzzing. I'll check and see if that's happening on stream. Oh. Hmm. Uh, Jesus! Is it going on on stream? It is happening on stream. Oh, good. That's- it is louder on stream than it is in my headphones. Oof. Interesting. I wonder why that's happening. Leo's busted ass mic. Nice, the curse lives on. Is the thing working? I can't tell. Did I fix it? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. I hear you, but... Let's see if it's still hissing. It hasn't buzzed since, but... Okay. Alright, sometimes my mic just does that. All right. I'll, I'll keep an eye on the input. I just gotta turn it off and on again. Um, I can't. I not joke. Oh, that's it. What? Sound. It started happening again. Oh, dug on it. Terms. 
Um. Did it do? Did it do? And put it from here. All right, better. Hmm. Mm, I think so. All right. Um. Can't find the fucking. Hold on. Go look at the fucking DLC page. Clicky. Click. Click on the thing. Show me the thing. 2018. Yeah, whatever. Wait, no, that was the warning. I skipped past it. <laughs> um, oh, here we go. Uh, one of the game's roots contains blood and go mentions of gore and torture. The other root oh. contains mild violence, drug and alcohol use, heavy profanity, sexually suggestive language, non-explicit sexual situations not shown visually on screen, sexual coercion, misogynistic language, and allusions to abusive behavior. Mm. So... Okay, we've already seen most of that, I guess. Yeah, there's, there's your warnings, everybody. <laughs> um, please don't ban me, John Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Are we all? Are we gonna be good? I think we're good. Yeah. Yes, I'm a uh, bit. I, 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 I'm a. I'm a grown man. You bet. I. I'm an adult. Yeah. <laughs> That's good to hear. Can you back the fuck up? Why don't you come right in then, my dear? I don't want to see you making any little posts online about how my party was too fucking problematic for you, though. <laughs> Ardata steps back and welcomes you again into her abode with a grandois gesture. You're very, very excited for Ardata's party, and know definitively that you will enjoy absolutely every second of what she has in store for you. You're yeah, grandiose. Uh, <laughs> that's what I said. Yeah, sure. okay. I, yeah, that's I what I said. I, I believe you. Yeah. It's not like you can rewind and, and, and fact check me. Yeah. No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, once you've stepped in past the thresh threshold, Ardata blows you a toxic kiss and saunters off to mingle with her enthusiastic guests. Oh, that's a different art style for background characters. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of I dig this. Diamond! Wait, you know Somehow it feels glass animals. Diamond, also, diamond, 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 diamond. Hey, dude. Boy. Baby boy. Crashing. Um, on He's got a hot right. dog. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see him. All right. I got Thank very you. excited there. Yeah, of course. I like that one down at the bottom left who has, like, their sign looks like eyes. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. You have some good troll designs. Yeah. I, like I dig it. Uh, the first thing that hits you once you're in the door is the music. It's a solid wall of, uh, of bass that reverberates through your body and down to your bones. The intense dance track is blasting so loud you can hardly hear yourself think. It has to be this loud to drown out all the shouting coming from the living room. As you apprehensively advance, it becomes quickly clear that Linera is completely out of her element here. She's a bundle of nerves beside you, practically glued to your hip. When you actually step into the living room, she physically attaches herself to your arm. Wow, this is... more than I was expecting. You too. It's a scene of absolute chaos. The living room of the house is filled to the brim with rowdy teens dancing rhythmlessly to the pounding music. The furniture has all been knocked over or otherwise destroyed, and you can make a pretty good guess of what's filling all the red cups you see in everyone's hands. You're about to tell Linera you wouldn't blame her if she wants to dip, but you can't get the words out before you're getting flagged down by a jade-blooded boy who's just muscled his way out of the throng of partygoers with a few of his friends in tow. <clears throat> Lenera, you've made it. Lenera all but flings herself away from your body and freezes like a scared animal as the troll approaches. 
For all the commotion and ruckus, he's still remarkably well put together. The vigorous dance huddle doesn't seem to have disturbed his sharp makeup or his impeccably quaffed qua hair. There is a <laughs> curious red stain down the front of his white shirt, though. I like that. At this point, I can tell who did whose sprites. Yeah. It's definitely the same person as who did Marvis and Alex. Yeah. <laughs> he has a slutty-looking indigo-blooded girl on his right arm and an even sluttier-looking teal-blooded boy on his left, though he shakes them off and waves them away by the time he reaches you and Lanera at the entryway to the room. Um, hi, Yeah, I'm here. You watch with amusement, huh? I'm uh, making the face, the sound that she seems to be making. Uh. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> also, can you hear what's going on in my kitchen? No. Oh, real. Alright, good. You watch with amusement as Lenera practically bursts into flames under his gaze, and it only gets worse when he sidles up to give her a starting, start, startlingly intimate embrace. She squeaks and tries to hug him back, but is too timid to actually touch him with her hands. You can see sweat pouring down her face. Femcell. After a solid five seconds, that seems to include Lank smelling Lanera's hair, he pulls back to smile down at Lanera with a heavy gaze. Lanera's face is bright green, and her eyes are bugging out of bugging out of her skull from how flustered she is. Yo, that was rude. She's not a femcell. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> no, actually, no. You're right. She is. Yeah. But she's not not into it. You don't think? It's hard to tell, but you kind of get the impression he'd be dead by now if she weren't. Either way, it's awkward. Lucky for Lanera, Lank, uh, either doesn't notice or doesn't care. He settles into a comfortable, for him, posture with his arm casually around Lanera's waist and turns to you. Oh, who's this? Um, this is my... Friend? Yeah. Lonk quirks an eyebrow. You have friends? Rude. <laughs> the question seems to leave Lanera speechless, so Lonk takes the opportunity to look back at you. His eyes rake up and down your body in a way that leaves you feeling distinctly objectified. Interesting. Oh, <laughs> aren't you interesting? That's what I just said. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a reason you look like that? Damn. Oh, hot as fuck? Yeah. <laughs> What a question. He doesn't explain what that is specifically referring to, and given both your alien status and your state of dress, it could mean any number of things. You might take it as an insult, if not for the way he licks his lips after he says it. He can't seem to pry his eyes off you. You look at Lanera for a cue, but she's too out of it to give you any sort of intelligible sign. So you just explained how you crash-landed on this alien planet an indeterminate amount of time ago, and you don't really know what you're doing or much of anything about it, uh, what you're doing or much of anything about anything. The fact of your appearance could be due either to this or that you're generally a disaster of, uh, a disaster of a being irrespective of your planetary origin. How fascinating. I've never met an alien before. Well, you have. Lots of times. In fact, literally everyone and everything I here is alien to you. You find your word diarrhea becoming more and more awkward and embarrassing as long sighs start burning a hole in the center of your chest. <laughs> There's no need to be sh so shy. I won't bite until asked. Lonk disconnects himself from Lanera as he rounds on you. It's like he's lost any interest in her existence now that you're in front of him. Lanera looks at you with a completely pathetic expression that readily informs you as to what your response needs to be. You'll be damned if you aren't going to be the best wingman possible, so you deftly ignore Lonk's blatant pass and turn the conversation back to Lanera. You ask Lonk how long he and Lanera have known each other. Lonk raises his eyebrows at the question. Hmm. Well, 
I suppose since she was chosen for the cloister? Some number of sweeps ago. I don't remember, really. It was 2.43 sweeps. Oh, right. Then, that many, I guess. Huh. That's a pretty long time, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty impressive that you managed to go a solid 2.4 of them without saying a single word to me that wasn't circulated back to me secondhand from your snide gossiping behind my back. Oof. Uh, wow. Talk about whiplash. Lanera's eyes get big like saucers. Uh, what? What? What are you... I don't know what you're talking about. The tone of the conversation has totally morphed from fire to ice in an instant, though neither Long's expression nor demeanor have changed much. He slips in the knives with all the calm composure of a casual statement. What? Are you, are you going to pretend you didn't spend the better part of two and a half sweeps complaining about how much I disgusted you? Come on now. You do know that everyone is aware you're a nasty little bitch, right, Lanera? I... Um... I... I mean, don't take it the wrong way. I don't really mind. I'm hardly in a position to criticize. I was just curious what caused this sudden change of heart. After so long decrying my vain and slatterly lifestyle. I don't... Uh, did I unmute? I no, I was just googling. Right. No, you're fine. Uh, I... Have the impending ordeals finally made that little clock start to tick down in that dry, dusty nook of yours? <laughs> I I made the forget to unmute mistake too many times so that I get scared every time. <laughs> <laughs> Did you figure I was the only one who might be loose enough to be willing to clean out those cobwebs before you get shipped off? to Space Church and never have the chance again. Just wondering. Yeah, just wondering. Damn. There's a long, excruciating moment where Lanera says nothing. She just stares up at Lonk uh, beside her with a completely shell-shocked expression. Before you can try to pipe up in, L in Lanera's defense, she bursts into tears. Oh no. Ruthless. When Lanera suddenly turns and makes a mad dash to run out the door and away from the party, you're torn between running after her and giving this jerk a real piece of your mind. Your mind's made up when you look back at Lonk just in time to catch him rolling his eyes. Hey, you say. That was kind of rude, don't you think? Lonk snorts. <laughs> Me? Rude? <laughs> uh, are you perhaps attempting to fuck with me? Clearly haven't spent much time around this bitter pill if you think that was anything short of precisely what she deserves. You can see that maybe that uh, you can see you maybe don't have a full enough grasp on jade blooded uh, cloister social dynamics to make a definitive judgment on whether or not Lanera deserved to have been so ruinously owned. But choose your friend, and what good are you if you don't stick up for the people you care about? I have no idea what even got her so upset. Oh, really? No like idea. I, like I said, it's not like I really care what she says about me. Don't you get to spend... But you don't get to spend as much time as she does being such a venomous little snake and act surprised when someone calls you out on it. Okay, you know what? Kind of... I mean, you're being a big snake too. Yeah. But I know kind of fair. I mean... Couldn't you guys have done this back at the cloister? <laughs> Apparently not. Uh, then why did you invite her, you ask? It seems needlessly cruel of Long to lead her on under... 
uh, false pretenses if he never intended to be her friend at all. I promise you, I had no such designs. The only reason I even invited her to this thing was that my ex is being a real blood-sucking bitch, and no one else wanted to go. I was willing to give her an honest shot, but I have no time for a vicious, slandering nag who can't even admit what she is. I thought it might be interesting to see that what that crusty little shrew might be if, like, if you could manage to wrest her bulge free of whatever excruciating knot she got it tied into. But I guess now we'll never know. Well, this is clearly a conversation you're going to have to Switzerland out of pretty soon. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> you try to explain the historical significance of Switzerland's uh, political neutrality on your home planet. Long's eyes glaze over like he's listening to you recite a sports almanac of cricket stats. Man, I forgot that cricket was a sport for a second, so I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, like, some weird stat screen of, like, a cricket. <laughs> That's nice. Anyway... Stuck seems to have scared away my date. Why don't you stay a while and I get to and I can get to know each other a little better. You seem much more interesting than she is anyway. When did Long get so close to you? Your heart beats a little faster when he smiles at you like that, so poisonous and shamelessly laced with intent. Lanera is definitely not the only one coming off like a snake here. I have less time to waste than most, dear. Never seen the value in beating around the bush. Well, maybe it'd be socially prudent for you to go after Lanera and make sure she's okay. But it's also not her volume of the friend sim. So instead of doing that, you're going to stick around and see what this spectacularly briary prima donna is all about. I thought I had to make sure. <laughs> you know, it's not her volume, so you can't. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had your fucking chance to bail out of this shit show, but all that's left to do now is barrel downhill as meteorically as you can manage. Fantastic. Can't dance. Why the fuck not? Oh what? man, I just noticed that Diamond has a hot dog, and so does his buddy he's talking to. Yeah. They're, they're friends. They're friends. Like hot dog buddies. They have something in common. Also, uh, this dude, I don't know how to feel. Yeah, he's... <laughs> about him so far. He's mean, but also, if she was really saying all that stuff about him, he's kind of within his rights. Yeah, and I... Like, like what honestly, he did was I believe it. Yeah, because she's like that. I mean, she considering is like what that. She, considering what she said at the cafe to that girl who was trying, that teal blood girl who was trying to be her friend, yeah. I completely believe <laughs> that she said nasty stuff about him and is getting upset about being called out. But on the other hand, it's tacky to do this at someone else's party, you know? Yeah. I mean, it is but a I planet don't... full of teenagers. You'd think this shit would be, like, yeah, not out of place. I mean, you think that, like, as a Jade Blood, he looks, he looks like, about our age or so, so he's gonna be shipped off soon. Yeah. So you think he'd be wanting to make friends, not enemies. <laughs> <laughs> then again, I guess he did say he's not the type to beat around the bush. Yeah. So maybe he really doesn't care. <laughs> I don't know how to feel. I really like him, like, as a character so far. I don't know if I like him. <laughs> yeah. As a person. I'm in the also, same spot, man. man. This fucking man, are dude. Man, his good. Yeah. <laughs> Real eye candy, at least. <laughs> uh, Lonk laughs pleasantly and reaches out to take you by the hand. The contact gives you a little thrill, despite yourself. He's got nice hands, soft and warm and well taken care of. And you know it's going to be one hell of a ride, wherever he's taking you. Come with me. You do. He doesn't lead you straight to the dance floor, though. He takes you around the throng of dancing partygoers over to the kitchen of the house first. 
you weren't expecting to find a familiar face waiting for you there. Hey! <laughs> Fancy meeting you here. I'll take her. Yeah. Might as well. <laughs> <laughs> you don't find it that surprising, honestly. You two know each other. You could say that. Man, the wildly differing art styles is kind of funny. Yeah. yeah. That's just great. Do you give discounts to friends? I sure fucking don't. You know the price, pretty boy. Pay up. Hmm. <laughs> You're a little confused. What's being purchased here exactly? Bro, are we getting weed? The marijuana's. Mm -hmm. You Miss that Jane. Vegetable? <laughs> the wacky tobacco. Albert <laughs> gives you a funny look. You a drone? Bitch, no, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> what? Hush. You do as you're told and watch as Lank and Elward carry out their shady transaction. Lank hands over the credits and receives an opaque little baggie of something in return. Oh well, I guess you don't really need to see what's in this- what's in the thing to figure out what it is at this point. Ah, uh, alien cocaine? cocaine? Drugs! <laughs> as soon as the deal is done, Lank uh, has his hand at the small of your back and is deftly guiding you away from the scene of the crime. Is buying drugs a crime here? I didn't ask if we were a drone, so I assume. Yeah, You aren't really well versed about the laws of Alternia, but it doesn't- uh, but it honestly doesn't really seem like anybody would give much of a shit about anybody doing drugs out here. You guess the clandestine transactions are just for the aesthetic. Mike's got you back in a shady corner of the party and is pressing one of the tablets he bought into your hand with a sly grin. Okay. He expects okay. you to join in. Peer pressure. Can you at least tell us what we're... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, uh, hold on a minute. Your experiences with alien drugs haven't really been that great, honestly, and you're not sure you're that excited for a repeat performance. Lenk's immediate response is to sneer. Oh, wait, we have done drugs. We did have a pretty good experience with Sarava. Yeah, Sarava was chill. Yeah. Oh, we I good. see. You're one of those people. One of what people? You know. A bit boring, maybe. <laughs> Bitch, oh, what man. are you- what I'm is it? sweetness, peer pressure. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Why can't we just ask him what it is? Why can't you just tell us? <laughs> no, t it, it, take the mystery drugs or you're a rube. <sighs> there are many words Hi. that could be used to describe you, but you don't think boring is a remote contender. You're always doing all kinds of unbelievably stupid shit and getting into uncountable, wacky, and life-threatening situations. Is it really that fucking much to ask for there to be one time you don't rush headfirst into doing something you know is going to fuck you up and be totally awful? Lank's lips press into a thin, annoyed line. These things are cheap, you know. I didn't ask you for this. You fucking them. for us! I didn't <laughs> ask for this. Oh man, they were right when they said abuse in those tags, huh? Uh-huh, <laughs> damn. Absolutely. I Excuse me? You. Now I know why the fandom is so suspect of lank simps. <laughs> well, you didn't ask him to do that, did you? Mm -mm. Oh, come on. You're really going to be like this? Absolutely! <laughs> yeah, you totally are. Lank sighs dramatically. Cry about it. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. Don't you dare! Don't you do anything to my little friend! Don't you put your hands on him! <laughs> or his hot dog. In any sense. Mm -mm. Lank casts around for the nearest victim and grabs his that and grabs his attention with a hand around his wrist. To your dismay, it's your sweet and innocent hot dog chum diamond. Alas, there's nothing you can do to stop him from falling prey to Lank's wicked designs. Here, have these. Oh yeah, great. Thanks, I love to put drugs on my wiener. 
<laughs> okay, Diamond's cool with it. It's okay, fine. Diamond's chill. It's fine. <laughs> oh my god. Diamond? <laughs> I love to put drugs on my wiener. I I didn't realize he was that he was so hardcore. He was so into drugs on his wiener, but I guess we learn new things about our friends all the time. I mean he's basically the Alternian equivalent of a crust punk. He lives on the street you are voluntarily. He scavenges. <laughs> I'm sure he'll he he'd fuck around in whatever he can get. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what a tragedy! But before you know it, Lank has a hold of you again and is dragging you off. Let's just dance. You're not too much of a square to do that, are you? Of course mm -hmm. not. Hmm? Fucking bitch, baby. Huh? Huh? <laughs> huh? You gonna fucking cry about it? You're fucking <laughs> negging us. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. Dancing is basically the one thing you actually plan to come here and do, so that's just great. Mm. You go along with Lonk enthusiastically when he pulls you over to the writhing mass of bodies bumping and grinding on the dance floor. You get down in. Uh, you get down to it. You soon discover that Lonk has a very, uh, interesting dancing style. And by interesting, you mean it primarily consists of directly grinding his body against yours in an incredibly <laughs> shameless fashion. Bro. Yeah. Please. But pressed in as you are from all sides by sweaty and inebriated bodies, there's not exactly much room for Troll Jigas to begin with. Lonk is up, uh, is up on you so close, it's hard not to sweat. He has his hands on your hips, and your face fixed with sharp eyes. His heavy stare is nearly hypnotic, so blatant and undisguised is his expression. It's clear what he wants, and maybe that's more than you're prepared to give, but when he looks at you like that, it's impossible to look away. You just go with it. Why not? It feels good, and it's not like anyone else is watching. You're surrounded by trolls boxed in and pouring sweat, and yet it feels like you're the only two people there. Lank draws in, teeth by your ear, and this close you can hear him easily even over the overwhelming pound of the bass. You have the palest skin I've ever seen. Yeah, you tell him you're literally FFFFF white, which is like blank. It makes you super racially inoffensive, FYI. You let Lank know he can see you any way he wants, which is even more woke than making a decision. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Thin as paper. Okay. I can see all the way inside you. Are you gonna sure. vampire us? You might vampire us. <laughs> all your veins and your red blood. You smell like candy. You're totally gonna vampire us. I wonder how do you taste? You're gonna kill yeah. us. Wow, haha, <laughs> you say. That's like some shit a vampire would say. <laughs> Presuming I'm a rainbow drink drinker would be awfully reductive in a literal reading of my character. I'm just making a blatant sexual pass. Cool. <laughs> oh, okay. Good thing that's all cleared up. You take this as an opportunity to really let loose, showing off everything you've got in the sexy dance acumen department. Lank is a little bewildered. A little. I'm What are you doing? <laughs> You're like, what aren't I doing? There's a fire on the dance floor and you struck the match. You're just fucking it up in here. Really getting it. Breaking it down. Bopping and crumping and whatever. You're smashing your ass into everyone around you and getting hot and heavy with those lusty moves. Man, I... Man, this is a whole lot of shit happening. But anyway, I decided I kind of want some chicken now instead of a burger. Mmm. Chicken burger. Mm. Look at his face. Yeah. <laughs> There's a point where Lank has to step back, you presume, to properly behold your art in all its glory. But it soon becomes clear that it's not your prodigious dancing skills that have given him pause. You follow his startled gaze and see the cause for alarm. Bronya is here, and she looks pissed. Uh -oh. Fucking snitch. Nark! 
Snark! Oh, shit. <laughs> Bronya is still standing in the entryway contending with Ardata, and it looks like she hasn't caught sight of you yet, but Lonk isn't wasting any time. You gotta kidnap us? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Before you realize what's happening, Lonk has, has you by the wrist and is hauling you away from the dance floor and off down the hallway. Lonk finds the safety in a bedroom. R respite block, you remind yourself, when you take stock of the conspicuous absence of any bed and the presence of the revolting-looking slime cocoon in which trolls are allegedly spend their repose. You hold each other in a tense and nervous silence pressed against the locked door. What feels like an eternity passes, your breath held. The sound of your blood rushing through your own ears is almost enough to drown out the music. Seconds turn to minutes, and nobody comes to find you. It seems, for now, you've escaped Bronya's notice. When you turn your head to look back at Lonk, you find he's been staring at you for some time. Take a picture, it'll last long. <laughs> yeah. I'm not romantic at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, the only romance I enjoy is, like, the small shit. None of this <laughs> weird party shit. I mean, at least, like, I'm not a big fan of parties myself, so at least I guess we're not at the party anymore. Yeah. I might yeah. make sure get in any kind of mood. <sighs> I haven't been able to take my eyes off you since the first moment I saw you. You're just so interesting. Literally, that's <laughs> white. Yeah. Yeah, we should the buzz then. Mm. Yep. Nah. Duh. 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 Duh, fix it. Sounds like it. Yay. I'm a genius. Mm. This line is giving me intense zebra vibes. Oh, don't say that. Am I Somehow wrong? I like you more than Zebra. Yeah. That's a shame. <laughs> I think I think he's better he's more able to be liked than Zebra since he's he's just telling you straight up no, I'm just straight up being horny for you. Yeah, he's not trying to hide it. There's no um I forgot the word for it, but like He's being completely honest. He's just really horny. Yeah. <laughs> he's weird and manipulative about it, but um, he's not gaslighting you into believing that he's not actually hitting on you. Yeah. Also, he hasn't really mentioned our blood at all. He's mentioned that we look interesting, but I mean, yeah, I guess we would, seeing as how we're the only people on the planet who look like that. Yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't feel as creepy somehow? A little bit. Mm. So creepy. Just a little, a little bit. bit. You freeze like a hare, staring down a snake. Lank lifts his hand to brush a thumb across your cheek, fingers curling under your chin. You meet his eyes. His pupils are so black. I want to know what it'd be like to kiss you. Honest. <laughs> Lank's tongue darts out to wet his painted lips. Do you want to kiss me? Whoa. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to do? <laughs> well, you've already clicked on at least two mature content disclaimers to get this far. Why the hell not? Oh, okay. Lank oh, leans in and presses his lips against yours. His kisses, uh, he kisses much more sweetly than he looks. His lips are soft and wet and taste like blackberries. This beats making out with a couple of greasy teens behind a dumpster, that's for sure. <laughs> what? Oh, wait, right. That, wait, that, were we able to do that? Cooper and Follicle, bad end. Oh, we didn't see that. That's why. Okay. Beep oh, it's um, But we didn't see their bad end, did we? We didn't. I don't remember kissing them. Yeah, we didn't see their bad end uh, on stream, but I've, I've read the wiki pages. All right fix the thing again I think hopefully please stop breaking <laughs> uh, 
smoochin' teens behind a dumpster, when one of his sharp fangs nicks your bottom lip, you don't even care. I like blackberries. But when a drop of your blood beads out onto his invasive tongue, Lank draws back just an inch. You taste sharp and dangerous. Like a weapon. You kiss a lot of weapons, my dude? Is that a good thing? It's not a bad thing. Reminds me of that trope of people who like lick their knives. Yeah. It's like a big crazy villain trope, right? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Blank pulls back further, his hand slips from your cheek, and his fingers trail down your neck to rest on your collar, thumb brushing against the thrum of your pulse. We didn't piss ourselves yet! Yet. <laughs> Have you ever been paled before? Oh! Lank shrugs, his, shrugs off his jacket and starts unbuttoning his shirt. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is this really gonna go there? You hit still ban us. Yeah. You're like, well, no, you've never done any alien intercourse with a bucket, but it doesn't look like he even has one on him at the moment. That was apparently the wrong thing to say because Lank's face scrunches up in displeasure. Don't mock me. It's my first time. You figure laughing would constitute mocking him, so you don't, but the look you give him seems to say enough. Us jades who live in the cloisters have been chosen for a very special duty. We're expected to ado adopt a chest and... Ascetic? Ascetic? Ascetic life in the service to the continuation of our species. Sorry, yes, ascetic, you're right. And when we undergo our ordeals, we are sent off world. There's no such thing as sneaking out of the caverns. Let's see if that fixes it. If I don't do this now, when? My n life is nearly over. Will you help me feel alive? But before you can answer, Bronya's voice starts to rise shrill above the heavy music. Sorry, uh... Long? Lonk's hands shoot out at lightning speed to draw you close. Before you can so much as gasp, he presses one of his palms over your mouth to keep you quiet. Oh shit, she's close, and from the sound of it, she's getting closer. Lonk! I know you're here! You need to come out and come home right now! Lonk leans in close to your ear. Shh! What will you do? Call on his mom! <laughs> <laughs> oh. This has gotten problematic enough. <laughs> problematic. <laughs> Alright, I mean, at least he... Okay. Quick rundown of everything that has happened so far. Oh, hello, Mom. Um, as I was saying... And she's yelling. Uh, he's asked us for permission. So he has not made us do anything, yeah? Yeah, he's been kind of pushy and kind of yeah. rude. But yeah. I think he's just like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's just kind of a dick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but like, Craig, we're still friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I still hang out with you, man. <laughs> I mean, I assume you guys still like being around me. <laughs> but, okay, he has not made us do anything. So I don't feel like a five red, al like a five alarms to have gone off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
three is where you like. Yeah, three, three, three is, where is where you call the mom. Yeah. So I guess. But he did not kiss us without our permission, and he asked us about paling first. Yeah. So. I I'll give you another chance. <laughs> I guess let's get Twitch banned. Yeah, let's get Twitch banned. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your mouth shut and wait for Bronya to pass. She only shouts for a little while longer before the sound of her voice fades away. There are too many blocks in this hive for her to be trying to break down the door to every one, and she didn't look too closely at this one. You've lost her. When it comes, uh, when it becomes clear Bronya is gone for good, Lonk lets his hand fall away from your lips. You feel him smile against your ear. Where were we? Bah, 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 bah. Bah, bah. <laughs> you, you turn in Lonk's arms and look up into his blazing eyes. How can you alien pale without a bucket? I don't mind doing it without one. Oh. Sometimes it can be fun to get a little messy, don't you think? I don't know what you're expecting from us that we can't make as much as you can. Sorry. <laughs> You're like, weren't you just saying this was your first time? Lang <laughs> answers you with another kiss. This time he means business. Did you lie about being a virgin? <laughs> How dare you! You can't be my waifu anymore! Goodbye! <laughs> <laughs> MC Jen! <laughs> MC Jen! Phew! You go all the way with this super slutty alien. And then you slump out on the ground, completely <laughs> <Okay>. wasted. <laughs> MC Jen. <death. laughs> oh my god. Uh, maybe this all went kind of off the rails, but you have to admit it would have been a real shame if you got through this entire extraterrestrial adventure and never got to smash even a single alien. What would be the fucking point, honestly? <laughs> yeah, really. How do you play a friend-making game and not even smash one? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, this guy really did a n whole number on you. You're lying spread-eagled on the floor as Lank is putting his clothes back on. Man, this is probably your most accomplished friendship to date. You're not quite ready to move just ne just yet, but since you and Lank are such good chums now, you figure now's a good time as any to ask for his chitter. He's gonna say no, fuck off. Nice. Lank seems surprised to even hear you speak. Oh? Huh? You want to add me on Chitter? Yeah, you say. Isn't that what friends do? We just... Friends. Uh, friends. <laughs> oh, uh... Sorry, I can't. My palm husk is broken right now. Lang says, while typing away furiously on his palm husk. He doesn't even look down at you. You're like, uh, but you're using it right now? Lang rolls his eyes. I thought you would take the obvious hit. <laughs> What obvious hint? Lank huffs. Look, I was trying to be nice, but... You just weren't that good, babe. I don't often ring the same bell twice, but if I were going to consider it... So you totally lied about being a virgin. Nice. You'd have to show me a better performance than that. Damn, bad end. Because <laughs> we're bad in bed, yeah. <laughs> apparently. Holy shit. That's that, you guess. Your lowest low. Your first time banging an alien, and you couldn't even satisfy him. A little seed of worthlessness takes root inside of you and germinates so explosively that it fills you up until there's basically nothing left. You die of shame instantly. Bad end! <laughs> <laughs> we- oh my gosh. Bad end, huh? Bad end! We were just so bad at that. Oh my god. Oh no! <laughs> mom! 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 Oh, I shouldn't yell mom. My mom's upstairs. She'll... Might <laughs> uh, you rip Lank Lank's hand off your mouth and start yelling for Bronya. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Lank try and tries to scramble away from you to make some sort of last-ditch effort to escape, but it's no use. Bronya hears you and comes running, furious. She hulks the locked door off its hinges before you can even get up. 
<laughs> Hold on a second. Did you? <laughs> Did you actually get your mom to come over? No, my mom just fucking called me. Oh. Uh. <laughs> she hulks the locked door off its hinges. You duck flying in chunks of alien architecture and scuttle off to avoid what you fear might be further alien fists. Block. As angry as her voice is, some of the fury goes out of her face the moment her gaze lands on Lonk's state of partial undress. She reflexively brings a hand up to shield her eyes. <laughs> what the world? Put your clothes back on right this instant, young man! <laughs> <laughs> Lonk freezes where he stands, apparently accepting that he's been caught. There's nowhere left to run if he doesn't intend to fling himself out a window. A sneer uncoils on his face. Oh, please. Save the Purity Act. Like this is like this is anything you haven't seen already seen a dozen times before. Bronya's face goes bright jade. What? What in the world are you implying? I would never. I'm Forget Lanera, you've always been the craziest bitch in the whole cloister. You know you aren't actually a Lucis, right? Bronya marches <laughs> right up to Lank and slaps him hard across the face. Lank makes an undignified noise as he recoils from the blow. It looks like that really hurt. His face is stinging uh, bright under the handprint. He forces out a strained laugh. <laughs> My word, Bronya. If he wanted to join us, all you had to do was ask. Damn. Uh. <laughs> Damn. You wish you had some popcorn right up, right around now. You just kind of sit back and take it all in. Lank's invective has its apparent desired effect. Bronya is all but steaming at this point, hands balled into fists at her sides. You kind of want to say hi to your friend, but she's a little preoccupied, it seems. I am not going to rise to your petty baiting. You know you're in the wrong here. You're not gonna rise to it, but you did slap him. Yeah. One, we've spoken time and time again about recklessly sneaking out to these parties, and now you're dragging Lanera into your mess. Two, Lanera has told me about all the things you've been saying and doing to her, and it is completely unacceptable, Unc. Three, you've had more than enough lectures about the way you treat your plush quadrant partners, and it absolutely needs to stop. Oh, you are coming back with me to the cloisters right now. When we're home, we're going to have one last serious talk about this. And if there aren't changes, there are going to be consequences. Eventually, Bronya's overbearing hollering seems to finally break Lonk down. He sighs, shoulders slumped, and rolls his eyes. Fine, fine. <laughs> Bronya... <laughs> crosses her arms indignantly as she waits for Lonk to finish fixing his clothes. Lonk buttons his shirt, puts back on his jacket and his tie, and then he has to go retrieve his palm husk, which he seems to have discreetly slid over to where you're standing. He casually saunters his way over, and instead of picking up his own device, snatches yours out of your hand. Hey, I've got to go, but let me give you my chitter information. We can pick off where you left off later, sweetheart. <laughs> Bronya stomps over to grab Lonk by the ear and drag him away, but not before he's finished putting his chitter contact into your palm husk. He shoves it back into your hand, mouths you a see you later, and is then fully hauled out of the room. Hypocrite! You need to shut your mouth! And then they're gone. Friendship accomplished? You guess? <laughs> I guess we didn't. I mean, we didn't. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. We all, but I forgot the we were wearing that. I uh, forgot we had a cape. The cape and the sexy bra and the fucking yeah. fishnets. What a look. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're just styling. I love this look for us. 
Oh, no wonder you thought we looked interesting. I just <laughs> remembered that I never mind. What? Mm -hmm. I've rocked a, a look similar to this. <laughs> what? Do what? you want to understand? Excuse? Excuse me? Uh? Do you want to understand? But then what? Pardon? Pardon? Excuse me? Excuse me? Anyone else know any other ways to say that? Any other, any other uh, languages? Uh, other languages. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think we're all out. Yeah. <laughs> Any German? Anyone got German? I was trying to. <laughs> oh, I fell German. asleep during German. Purposely. French and Japanese. That's all we're good for. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of Spanish. Oh, a little bit of Spanish. A taste of Spanish. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I guess, I'd ooh. like to understand. I, I sure. like knowing things. Hmm. Of course you do. Your sort of creature always does. You're worn out. Last night was, well, it sure was something. You lived, probably. You learned, definitely. You made choices. You had to. <laughs> and after all this time, here you still are. So after a day of recuperation from ragers and houses of horror, you're out walking the streets hey, of... This feels like the end, but we haven't done the other side yet. Uh, yeah, it does feel like the epilogue, but I'm assuming that it just is some more time shenanigans or something. Yeah. Let's just keep rolling with it for now. Uh, so after a day of recuperation from ragers and houses of horror, you're out walking the streets of the place you may as well start calling home. You've changed out of your party gear, opting for your old hoodie standby. It fits the mood party you're in. Gear. For the party. <laughs> You're not really looking to meet anyone new tonight. Well, like, you wouldn't say no, probably, but you're not jonesing for it. Only a little. It's complicated. After an indeterminable amount of minutes of aimless walking, you look around at where you've ended up. You seem to have wandered into a dirt pile. Oh, you know this dirt pile. It's Fazer's corpse field. Hmm. How did you get here, you wonder? You're pretty sure you were just on the other side of the city, with no particular desire to come anywhere near here. It's probably fine. Just your deep, innate, bro-honing skills taking over your goddamn body. Just little friendship things. You look around for your pal Fazer, peering down that my mom's calling me again. <laughs> nice. <laughs> spaghetti. My mom made spaghetti. I'll be right back. <laughs> Girl, cool. get that spaghetti. Fuck yeah, dude. Get that spaghetti. <laughs> so, I was just hit with the craving for both pink and white and purple and white varsity jackets. So I looked <laughs> them up, right? Yeah. And I want them even more now. That was a mistake. <laughs> turns Varsity out that when you can, cool. yeah it turns out when you can see the thing you want it makes you want it more <laughs> actually <laughs> well who would have guessed so tempted to spend my money how much is a varsity jacket it depends on who you're getting it from I think authentic ones can cost up to $200 Jesus Christ yeah, because, I mean, it's usually with all the patches and stuff, and it's, like, a mix of different fabrics and a bit of leather, and it's a, it's a whole mess of marketing and, and manufacturing. But, um, I want one. And I wouldn't get an authentic one because I don't see the point. I'm not part of any team. <laughs> but, um, I am part of one team, the Planetarium. And if I want a planetarium themed part varsity jacket, I could just get a purple and white one and then decorate the rest myself. Get and some uh, fabric pens. Yeah, I'm gonna get some fabric pens and like do some stars and stuff over it. Gonna get some uh some team stencils and put plant and like 
draw in planetarium on the back and give myself the number nine. <laughs> it'll be it'll look sick. Why nine? Because that's my favorite number. <laughs> 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 Welcome back. All right. I'm back. I got food. Mm. Uh, you look around for your pal Fazer, peeking down into a few of the deeper holes. You might as well say hello since you're here and all. Holy shit, that? Again? Curiosity <laughs> killed the cat. The cat. Uh, but you're definitely. But you've definitely got more than nine lives, so you shrug and slide, not gracefully, down into the shiny hole. Fazer is nowhere to be found, but there is a window down here. It's almost completely unearthed, and doesn't take much effort to free it the rest of the way. At first, you think mm -hmm. it might be some cool new trash you could make art with, but when you get closer, you reconsider. There's a whole ass room you can see through the pane of glass lying at your feet. That's weird. Weirdness isn't typically a deterrent for you, but usually there is at least some caus causational coherence. Doors are in walls, walls surround rooms. You aren't used to finding parlors in ditches. Uh, I don't think we're supposed to be here. Yeah. We might not, yeah. Yeah, it feels like it really did just skip us straight into the epilogue. Yeah. Yeah. See, the one of the things was it mentioning the hoodie. Yeah. True. I mean, yeah. It's just weird that it would consider our route over when we only, or like that it would have a way to skip straight into the next part of the like the next part without going through the volume screen because we didn't get any of those lap like before, right? Yeah, I yeah. don't think it That's skipped us to the next. I don't think it skipped us to the epilogue. I think it's just... Like a preamble? I mm. guess. Some weird shit. Yeah. I don't think um, they'd make it available back... if it would fuck up the experience of the story to read the thing that's before the epilogue. Mm. Should we go back and talk to those little kids first? Or those twins? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like we should. Yeah. yeah. Just Yeah, let's do that. I mean, it did mention specifically, like, the party, so we know it comes, like, directly before this, but I don't think we're supposed to be here. I don't want to go through that door without talking to those kids first. Yeah. All right. Um, Y'all look at the pretty pictures of the clown twins. I'm just, I'm going to inhale this pasta real quick. <laughs> I like their outfit. There's some prospects. The name Barsum reminds me of Barnum, um, you know, the guy who made the sea monkey, the mermaid. What? Greatest showman main character. But um, he's the one who made the mermaid out of, you know, attaching a monkey to a fish. Oh! Hmm. They have, I think his name was Barnum Bailey, wasn't it? So, okay, so that's why they're definitely a reference. It was Barnum and Bailey Circus. So Barzum and Baisley, of course. Mmm, food. All right. Clowns. Mm. Uh, ta -ta. You've gotten pretty good at the old friend-making game by now. But even an old hand at palling around like you, a real platonic Lothario, uh, has bad nights sometimes. Tonight was one of those nights. Mm. It's getting close to morning and not a new friend in sight. You'd met new people, sure, but none of your conversations had panned out the way you wanted them to. Every interaction had come to a close with your friend count no higher than when you'd started, no matter how many compliments, offers to help, and other tried and true friend friending strategies you'd whipped out. You won't stand for it. You're determined to finish out the night with at least one more new buddy's name in, in your little back, black friendship book. But with the suns around, about to rise, you have to admit you're cutting it a little close. As each minute ticks by, the sky gets a little lighter and the possibility of dying an agonizing, fiery death gets higher. 
Maybe it'd be best for you to just pack it in and find somewhere to spend the day. You pick up your trusty palm husk and call up one of the many friends you already have to ask if you can crash. Hell, maybe Skylo will be up for sharing a Recuperkoon again. The soothing ooze has kind of grown on you, and sleeping next to Skyla always makes you feel so comfy and safe. Turns out Skyla is more than down with you coming over. Time to make tracks. You turn tail and hurry in the direction of Skyla's digs, and but it's not long until you run into a distraction. Hell yeah. That distraction is in the form of a house. It's a dark, crooked thing hulking close to the ground. Slatted wood walls, sl sloping roofs, vines cling to it like dust, and cobwebs cling to forgotten things in the attic. Something about it feels off. Mm. That gravity-defying uh, addition over there. Yeah. It possesses a certain energy that sends shivers up your spine, making your hair stand on end. An instinct deep in your gut is telling you to give it a wide berth. On the other hand, it's shelter. Skyla's place is a ways off yet, while the light, it, uh, while the house is right here in front of you. It could be worth seeing if whoever lives here is willing to put up with you for the day. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to approach the spooky house? Yeah. Like, these little fuckers are going to be like the twins from the room. <laughs> yeah. Also considering uh the Yeah, you know, it's the only place. I, I doubt they're gonna be like like, oh yeah, then you just leave and die in the sun. Well <laughs> I I assume we wouldn't ask Skyla if we didn't think we could make it in time. Yeah. Mm. So I I don't think they'd have us die in the sun on the way. <laughs> but I don't know, it'd be pretty fucking funny. That. It would be a little funny, but I think we should I think it'll just be a really fast bad end. Yeah. <laughs> so. Check yeah, it out then. Good. If we yeah. click no fucking way, it's just like, wow, turns out uh, you misjudged how far away Skyless Place is. You burn. Yeah. And then you're going to say, wow, turns out they were all right. You are super boring. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's check it. Yeah, let's check this house out. There's nothing else for it. You make your way toward the house. Even though everything inside you is screaming at you to stay away. Even though with every step you take, your chest tightens and your hands tremble. Mm. By the time you reach the door, you're shaking like a leaf. Adrenaline zings through you. You could choke on it. You want to run, but you force yourself to keep moving forward. It's a slow motion race between you and the sunrise. At this rate, the suns will make it all the way into the sky before you can even knock. It can't. I just can't get over how the game has assigned us bad at sex. I'm still thinking about that. <laughs> yeah. Assigned. You drag yourself the rest of the way, stumbling onto the front step. The door knocker is an intricate yet grotesque thing, an undulating tongue lolling out of a set of sharp teeth, all in cast iron. You grab the lumpy end of the tongue and bang it against the door. Nothing. Fuck. Maybe you'll get lucky and the door will be open? Out of options, you reach out and touch the doorknob. You can feel the first licks of sunlight against the back of your neck. Is it just you or is your skin starting to blister? But today's your lucky day. The door opens. Lucky. You should feel overjoyed at your life being spared. Instead, your focus is fully on how the roiling in your belly has bloomed fully into nausea. In the distance, inexplicably, is the peal of sirens, an insistent whining noise that only continues getting louder. You shouldn't have come here, but it's not like you had another choice. You might as well see what awaits you inside. But as soon as you cross, th cross the threshold, the world lurches, and you pass out. Mm. I'm intrigued. Mm. Oh, I just noticed how quiet it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've been thinking about so that. You come, to in, you come to in a different room than the foyer, head ringing like someone just whacked it. When you move to sit up, there's the sound of skittering all around you, like hundreds of tiny insects are scurrying away to safety. Had they been roving the floor while you were knocked out? Gross. Your, 
You prop yourself back up on your hands and take a look around. Your impromptu nap has done nothing to assuage the deep sense of wrongness you have about this place. But hey, maybe you've managed to sleep through the day. Maybe the sun has set again, so you can get the hell out of here. The sense of optimism is misplaced, probably, but it's not as if you can check. There are no windows. You cast your eyes around the room. Mm -hmm. Underneath the floral, peeling wallpaper, the walls are riddled with damp and mold. And on the other side of the room... An open door, thank fuck. Wait, hold on. If there are no windows, where is the light that's casting the shadow coming from? Um... Us. <laughs> we glow. We glow. We build well, that's, <laughs> that's really high up for us. I guess we got pretty tall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you aren't locked in, then. You can go look for somewhere else in this place that might have a goddamn window. Clowns. Man, I'm actually unsettled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh. I like so this one clowns. at the end. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, that's a cat with that's a cat with, with grease with paint on it. <laughs> Guys. Don't do that. Um, uh you step into a long winding corridor. It's so cramped you feel almost as though the walls are closing in. Well, it had been warm enough outside, and here, a deep chill settles over you, sinking deep into your bones. You're half convinced you'll never be warm again. Mm. Emanating from somewhere you can't see is music, tinny and rhythmic. It's soon interrupted by a crackling noise, like someone trying to tune in to the correct station on a radio. Then one of the picture frames lights up. Looks like it was actually some sort of TV screen. Mm. Oh. I can't tell which one spoke just now. Which one was it? No. Mm. I, I don't mm. think we know. All right. They're know. talking oh. at the same time. Uh, uh. <laughs> just say welcome uh, at yeah, the same just... time twice. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. Ah, oh, no. It's, oh, it's, there we okay. go. It's from the sides. Okay. I'll t I guess I'll be purple and you'll be yellow, Craig. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> Welcome. We're glad that you're awake. And that you came to visit us. We've been really, 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 really... Bored. Bored. <laughs> yeah, there's no way we're doing that at the same time. Discord. Yeah. In I'm this stinky the old house. It really sucked. We could have died. From how boring it was. Two voices. One monotonous and so quiet you can barely hear it. The other shrill, dramatic, like its owner never learned the meaning of the words indoor voice. Alright, uh, mon monotony, I got it. Monotony. <laughs> 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 monotony. Monotony. Uh, catching what the quieter person is saying isn't made any easier by the high-pitched giggling that starts up in the background whenever they start speaking. So hurry up and find us! We want to play a game! We want to play a game! What's this saw bullshit? Gee, <laughs> why do those words give you such a profound sense of deja vu? I dig the song. Oh yeah. Kinda. Uh, the line goes dead. At the same time, a door pops open at the other end of the corridor. You're meant to go through it, you guess. You'd rather go somewhere else, anywhere else, other than through that door, but there's nowhere else to go. Or is there? Feels too easy, let's search for another? Yeah. Well, fuck it. Gave sense. <laughs> I don't know. I could be totally wrong, but it just immediately felt weird. Yeah. Can't wait till we die. Yeah, if we're not taking the easy route. I don't know, let's let's try this. Oh, there right. has to be something else here. Ignoring the voice's instructions, you examine the walls of the corridor instead. Soon enough, you notice something funny about one of the paintings. It Its frame seems much thicker than the others, which strikes you as somehow conspicuous. Feeling along its bottom edge reveals a button. You push it. There's a groaning sound, and part of the wall folds itself away, revealing a tunnel of some sort. Ha ha, you knew it! 
<laughs> You're so gamer fun. friend. What do I tell you? Yeah. <laughs> You're so focused on trying to make your escape that you rush through the opening without looking. If you had been more careful, you might have noticed one very important thing. Past mm. this doorway, there is no floor. Your feet Dang it! Your feet meet <laughs> thin air, sending you pitching downwards. Drat, you think, as you plunge towards the pit of knives beneath you. <laughs> You've reached a follower milestone on Chitter the other day, too. And you hadn't gotten around to bequeathing it to any of your friends in case something like this happened. Nice. Your final regret regretful thoughts are of your account, dusty and abandoned, with no one there to continue to update it after you're gone. <laughs> nice! Oh, that's <laughs> good. I like that art. Yeah. yeah. Gamer sense. Yeah, gamer sense. I let us do dying quickly. <laughs> 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 but, wow. Yeah, I guess that makes sense with how you play games. <laughs> hey, I actually do pretty good in games, usually. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, sure. Hey, I, was, I did great in the escape room that I went to. Sure, sure, I'll take your word for it. Wow, really? <laughs> uh, Alright, let's, let's approach, approach the, the door. door. Yeah. Now, let's search now for another know. exit. I'm sure we can no. find another yeah, one. Yeah, good idea. But now we know these kids probably aren't liars. Yeah. There has to be something else. No, the, the, what happened? Door. Oh. Hmm. Uh, your wariness only intensifies once you set off down the hall because the walls start fucking bleeding. You've seen enough troll blood at this point to be able to recognize it. Multicolored streams ooze over the wallpaper and faded portraits lining the wall, collecting and congealing in sticky, viscous puddles on the floor. The narrow hallway becomes steeped in the stench of copper. You walk faster, but the streams of blood follow you, sluicing down from the ceiling as quickly as you walk. You reach the door, eager to get away from the grisly sight, you throw it open, but oh god, you hadn't considered what might be waiting for you behind it. What if these two shady characters plan to torture you? Tie you up and steal your palm husk, texting embarrassing messages to your friends, while well, you can only look on in horror? Helpless and unable to intervene? Anything but that. <laughs> it's too dark to see anything. All you can do is fumble and feel around with your hands. Getting out of the room again is a no-go. The door swung shut behind you as soon as you stepped inside. You shuffled forward on wobbly legs. The floor feels unstable somehow, like it's going to open up and swallow you at any moment. Would it be a good idea to call out to see if anyone's here? You manage a feeble hello. Your voice echoes. Soft laughter reverberates back in response. You catch a glimpse of something from the corner of your eye, a flash of purple. There's the sensation of eyes on the back of your neck watching you, but you can't discern where the other presence in the room is, if there even is one. You kind of hate this. Of all the shitty welcomes you've received, this one takes the cake. You have to get out of here. You try to gather your panicked thoughts together to formulate a plan, but before you can do anything, a series of ropes appear seemingly from nowhere, coiling tight around you and holding you down. Uh, you're finally here. We've been waiting for you! A light comes on. It's not the warm, burning rays of sunlight, this room is windowless too, but a spotlight, bright and harsh. It lights up a broad swath of the room, bleaching it white and sending long shadows stretching away from it. You can see your captors more clearly now, two purple blood kids. Aside from their expressions, they look exactly the same. A manic glint sparkles in the eye of one of them, as sharp as his razor blade grin. The other looks more hesitant, almost sad. Where Basili? Basley? Basley. And Barzum. You're the alien, ain't ya? You look weird. Your body's real weird! <laughs> we wonder what color your blood is. Or how springy and slimy your acid tubes are! They squirm around like slither beasts and they slice open trolls' bellies. Are yours the same? 
You struggle against your bonds. You have no idea what acid tubes are, but you'd much rather they stay inside your body where they belong, thanks. You thought you'd moved past the days where, where you had to serve as a torture muppet. All you needed was a few hours shelter from the sun, and if it's safe to go outside again, you'd really like to leave. This was the wrong thing to say, apparently. The twins leer at you disapprovingly, or, well, one of them looks so disappointed he might burst into tears. The other just looks pissed. No way. We told you. We've been so bored. Do you know what it's like? To be all alone? With no one else to play with? For wipes? We might have each other. We're never truly alone. That's what makes being us so great. But it's a little difficult to play pranks on someone. Who always knows what you're who always knows what you're thinking and feeling. Wait, you thought Barzum was the quiet one and Baisley was the loud one, but it looks like you were mistaken? Or did they switch? If you weren't faced with the prospect of having your innards yanked out and played with by bloodthirsty children, you might be more puzzled by their statements. As it stands, you have more pressing problems on your mind right now, so their words more or less fly over your head. You squirm harder, even though it doesn't do any good. In fact, it just seems to make the twins matter. Sadder? You settle on smatter. Stop trying to get away! It's always like this. Nobody ever wants to play with us! We hate it. Now hold still. Now hold still. You look at them beseechingly, trying to appear mm. as small and helpless as possible. Maybe it's a little pathetic giving puppy dog eyes to literal children, but you lost track of your own dignity a long time ago. They're not really going to do this, right? A noise starts up. It sounds suspiciously like a chainsaw. And is it just you, or is there the scent of raw meat in the air? Where the hell is it coming from? Creepy kids. You continue straining in your bonds, stomach clenching in fear, bile rising at the back of your throat. They're not actually going to hurt you, right? Oh god. Wait, oh. what is- hmm? hmm? Sorry, I was gonna ask what their full sprites look like. I wanted- yeah, I wanted to see what their bottoms look like. Yeah. Sorry. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh- You wake up, gasping. But you aren't strapped down anymore. You're in the same room that you were in at the beginning. What happened? The room hasn't changed since you've been gone. There's still only one way out. You really, really don't want to step through the door again, but what else can you do? You step through the door. There's that radio crackling again. Welcome. Welcome! We're glad that you're awake. Their little greeting goes on just like it had before. A pre-recorded message, maybe? Your heart pounds as you step through the second door. You're hoping you'll be able to sidestep the ropes this time, but instead of getting tied up, you trip forward into a vat of what feels like glue. You are lucky enough to have turned your face away from the stickiness so your nose is still above the surface so you can breathe. For now, anyway. But you can't move. You're finally here. We've been waiting for you! They're acting like it was the first time all over again. What is this fuckery? Are they messing with you? You met already, mere minutes ago. Uh, okay, weird to put the spotlight on. Um, no, we would have remembered. Meeting a weirdo like you! Stop trying to trick us. Then everything goes about black for a third time. And here you I are again. I'm, I'm beginning to understand, I think. Interesting. So very interesting. Oh my goodness. Welcome. Welcome! Are you for real? This time you get shoved into a box. You're pretty sure you pass out while you're in the middle of getting buried alive. You come to in the room you're beginning to think of as yours yet again. 
pass out five times. Ten. You begin to lose count. You never pass out at the same point during the twin shenanigans, but it event inevitably happens. And you always end up right back where you started. The worst part is that while your conversation with the twins stays the same, the way the trap the way they trap you changes. You get trussed upside down from the ceiling, dunked into a water tank, scrabbling to get out while your lungs begin to burn from lack of air. Every time you black out before you can die, but you've almost died dozens of times by now, and it's really beginning to stress you out. Are there marks on our bodies from previous times at all? Hmm. They haven't actually, like... I mean, I would assume, like, rope burn, or maybe being wet from almost drowning, stuff like that. There's never any evidence of yeah. what happened before. Interesting. You have to be stuck in some sort of time loop. You see this sort of thing in movies all the time, and everyone knows what movie that movies are the best points of reference for one's actual life. The hero wakes up to the strains of an old pop song playing on the radio and reminisces over their ch childhood journals, which sends them back in time where they have to stop a crime before it happens. Or maybe you were thinking of a different movie. You should watch Erased. Yeah. Anyway, your point is that you have not uh, you have to find a way out of the loop. Hopefully you won't have to do anything too wild, like stab your past self and then throw your own bloodied corpse out the window. That would really, really blow. Wouldn't it? That sure would Definitely. suck, huh? Hmm. Highly unfortunate. Uh, unfortunately, you can't seem to find any clues indicating what you should do next. You always pass out. The twins are always excited to place with slash torture you. They don't seem to be aware that any of this is happening, from what you can tell. After around 20-something or other, you've had it. You've had it. Enough is enough. You can't take any more giggling, any more of that hard, damp floor, any more excruciating games might not be any closer to figuring out what to do, but you have to try something. Huh. Huh. Fuck this or remember who you are. <laughs> uh... I, I, I love the choice of fuck this, which I can only assume is you laying on the floor, just staring at the ceiling with your arms crossed. It's like, fuck yeah. this. I'm fucking done. I'm gonna nap here. <laughs> uh, I guess I remember who we are? Yeah. There's one thing you've been doing wrong, making this all about escape. You've been so preoccupied with not getting sliced to pieces with knives and everything that you've lost track of, uh, with knives and everything, that you've lost track of what's truly important. Friends. The word that echoes in your heart when you rise at dusk and pulses through your bloodstream during the rest of your waking hours until it's time to go to sleep. The words, the word that's kicked off every single narrative you've starred in thus far. Friendship. You'll do things differently this time. You're going to bring yourself to truly care about these creepy clown children, God damn it! even if it's the last thing you do. And with the way things are going, it very well could be. Their MO is oddly benign this time, a tickling machine. Unfortunately, it's a little difficult for you to talk to them through all the laughter. What are the noises they're making? I think they're trying to tell us something. Miraculous miraculously, the tickling stops. You wheeze, trying to catch your breath, hoping to God you haven't peed. You've managed not to wet yourself out of fear until now. It'd be just the worst to have broken your streak due to laughing too hard. What is it about clowns and you divesting your body of waste? After assuring yourself that your underwear is blessedly dry, you ask, If they kill you, won't they just be alone again? How is that beneficial for everyone? They'll be bored and you'll be, uh, dead. Which you would really rather not be. They're creeping sack- Saccharin smiles transform into matching expressions of confusion. Barzum puts a finger on her chin, cocking her head to one side as if deep in thought, almost like a puppy. Under any other circumstances, you might even consider it cute. What are you talking about? We don't want to kill you. Maybe just cut you a little. 
You'll heal right back up again. Don't be such a wiggler. Some of the things they've tried to inflict on you would have definitely taken more than your regular human healing functions to recover from. But wait, you think back to Remily taking a whole ass club in her side and acting like it was no big. She'd said something about higher blood colors being able to take more of a beating too. Are the twins assuming that that's the case for everyone? God, this is what happens when all the adults in a society go off planet and leave a bunch of zoo animals to bring up their kids. Or, well, trolls also solve most of their problems by killing each other. You can't discount that either, you suppose. You take a closer look at the twins. There isn't any malice in either of their faces. The only emotion you can discern is idle curiosity. You decide to take that as encouragement. You explain that, no, you won't heal up from being sliced open, or from an on-fire scuttle buggy being flung at your head, because you're a human, and humans heal differently from trolls. Well, differently from high-blood trolls, at least. You even use your best babysitter voice for good measure. You feel like you're giving a stern talking to about the importance of taking care of one's toys so that they don't break. Instead, you propose, why don't you be friends? You can all play together instead of you being the uh, subject of their torment. They'll be able to play with you for longer that way, too. They give you a strange look. Friends? What's that? Do people not agree to be their playmates very often? No. Usually everyone runs in the other direction! So we have to catch them. Or trick them! That explains a lot. You think you're beginning to understand. If they let you down, you can try and show them what you have in mind. They do. They actually free you. They turn all the lights on in the room, too, so you can finally see everything in it. Ah. Hmm. That's cute. You reminds me of Sean's room. It's bigger than you expected and set up like a circus tent. A wire is suspended along the ceiling. A person-sized target board rotates at dizzying speeds across the black uh, across the back wall. Juggling clubs, knives, scarves, and other props are piled across the floor. You recognize a few of the mechanisms they had inflicted on you before. It's pure chaos. So what else do they do with all this stuff? They're still staring at you as if they aren't quite sure how to deal with you engaging with them voluntarily. You're feeling pretty tentative yourself. This whole interaction seems incredibly precarious. You're afraid that if you make a misstep, you'll end up in the tickling rack again. This isn't ours. We just found it when we got here. But it does look a lot... But it does look a lot like what's in our hive. We can do shows. And stunts. All kinds of cool, All kinds stuff. Of cool stuff. But even when they aren't threatening you, the way they talk in chorus like that freaks you out a little. In perfect <laughs> unison, like they're one voice instead of two. <laughs> yeah. Perfect unison. Perfect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You shake off your fears and suggest that they show you a little of something. They seem to like that idea. Excitedly, they scurry over to the target board. One twin stands against it while the other picks up a handful of throwing knives. You're anxious. You don't exactly want them to rough, you, rough up each other instead of you, but Barsum just throws the knives in a graceful arc. They surround Baisley perfectly, barely missing him. You gasp, your mouth a perfect O. The twins seem pleased with themselves, laughing together like they're sharing a secret. If you think that's impressive... Watch this! They execute a sick flip on a pair of trapezes above a bed of swords, making a daring escape from one of the contraptions they trapped you in. They move similarly to how they speak, perfectly in tandem with each other. Perfectly. With the variety of obsessions you've seen among your friends, it figures that it was only a matter of time until you met someone who made a hobby of risking their lives. It's not too out of- it's not too out there compared to cage fighting, you suppose, 
or collecting saucy East Alternian figurines. You could have just escaped! From the trap we put you in earlier, you know? Oh, wait. Why didn't you? You laugh nervously. <laughs> you haven't exactly had much practice, and maybe it would have been easier if you had someone else to help? You look at the two of them pointedly. You didn't even realize uh, siblings were a thing among trolls, let alone twins. Hmm. Sibling? What's that? You know, someone you uh, share a lucis with? Someone you hatched with in the same clutch? Are you phrasing that right? We do share a lucis. We share everything! We didn't just hatch from the same clutch. We hatched from the same egg! We were going to be a single troll, but... We split in two! Just our bodies, though. Our minds are still one. One person, two bodies. We're one in the We're same. We're one in the same. Okay, maybe siblings aren't a thing on Alternia after all. Being nope. literally the same person is quite a bit different from the human concept of twins or siblings. Somehow, this leads to them telling you all about a number of exploits they had with some of the other kids in their neighborhood. One story, uh, one story lead, leads to another, and soon you're recounting some of your own adventures, too. They particularly love your attempt at giving an impression of Nikki, clapping and crowing as you get into a dramatic power stance and flex your flimsy muscles. You can't help but feel a little proud of yourself. You feel like the guy on Jurassic Park who walked into the Ver Velociraptor den all, Be chill, my dudes! And they actually listened to him. Besides, there's something great about making kids laugh, even kids who were trying to murder you less than an hour ago. Hmm. The twins are in the middle of talking about a prank they'd played that they found hilarious, and that you've been trying hard not to grimace and horror at, when you feel it. A certain change in the air. Didn't they mention they had been stuck here? In a moment. Did we? Oh. Okay. I'm finding them very interesting. Yeah, I like these two. <laughs> Couple of goblins. I, was I got pizza. How they were... Eat the pizza. Welcome back. I was wondering how they were going to approach twins because we know for a fact that twins don't have siblings or parents. Yeah. So seeing, especially because of how their reproductive system works, or like how they uh, approach reproduction. So. Yeah. I'm very interested. <laughs> very cool. They're definitely rare. Um, I'm did surprised we? they weren't cold. Yeah, me too. I suppose it's not like a dangerous or negative mu mutation and could I'm... be explained I... away or brushed under the rug. I would say they're pretty dangerous. Yeah. Being able to have two bodies to enact your plans with, if they'd gotten, if they like felt any urge to, it might be a bit easier for them to, you know, get rid of a certain condescension when they grow up. True. Because they always have someone on their side. Yeah, they'd be quite dangerous. Yeah. Mm. But it could be that they're just very good at hiding away. They like to play pranks and stuff, so I imagine maybe that has something to do with it. Also, they're very gifted with escape. True. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have. When we try to go out the door. Some sort of force pushes us back. You're the first other person we've seen. Since we got here. You have a hunch that that might be- that that might have changed. Why don't you all try again? They look at you skeptically. If you want. It's not going to be any different, though. You just tell them to trust you. You look at the front door. The twins are crowding you from either side, clinging onto your arms and edging so close it's like they're trying to burrow into you. Ready? They nod. You push against the door. It opens, and you breathe in the cool evening air. 
Not so fast. We've gotten this far before. Well, you won't be able to go any farther. You'll see. You take one step, then another. As you look beyond the grounds of the house, you see things you, uh, you hadn't when you first got here. Mountains in the distance, other houses. Before, all you could see was shrubbery. You pick up the pace. The house falls away behind you, disappearing into the fog. Whoa! You did it. Oh shit. You actually did it! We can finally leave. They swoop in to grab you, hugging you hard. The curving horns of their masks almost stab you in the cheek. These things are a bit of a hazard when their wearers only come up to about where your chest is. They keep talking before you can get a word in, pulling you forwards and shuffling you along between them. It looks like you were right. It wasn't just enough to save yourself. You had to save them, too. You don't know how, but the key to making this little patch of universe obey the rules of reality once more was friendship all along. Mm. <laughs> you should have seen your face. Uh, you were shit your gam too terrified. You heave a sigh as their incessant giggling surrounds you like so many playful ghosts. Yes, yes, you say, very clever. They were the ones behind all this nonsense, weren't they? You started guessing somewhere toward the end. The you wiggle your hands vaguely. All the time stuff. They sure scares you, all right. Um. No. That wasn't us. We were talking about the... Bloody walls and creepy sounds. No, that was real. That was all us. That was all... <laughs> chuckle I... voodoo. It's chuckle voodoos. Uh, it's just very hard to read. Yeah, yeah don't worry, I got you. Uh... We're the best at chuckle voodoos. We got you so good. <laughs> They both bounce beside you excitedly. You blink down at them. You have no idea what the heck chuckle voodoos are, but you can only guess that it's some sort of uh, illusionary thing. So they didn't have anything to do with time messing up, folding in on itself? No. We told you. Mmm, pizza. Either. We've been trying to get out of that stupid house. For wipes. Maybe even a peregrine. Did you really think? That was our hive? Our place is... So much cooler than that dump. Is it their actual <laughs> hive? You have your reservations about that, but you can't find it within you to say no as they eagerly pull you along, one twin tugging your hand, the other looping an arm in yours. You look back at the house one last time. You have no clue whether the twins are lying or, if they're telling the truth, what really caused what happened there. But right now, you're content enough knowing that you'll never have to see this place ever again. No. <laughs> Funny. Do you want to... They don't have a ending image. That's disconcerting. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I guess we do want to understand. Yeah, I'd like yeah. to understand, please. Well, let's understand, actually. Oh, we already read this part, right? Yeah, yeah. let's just get back to yeah, where we... Yeah, let's into see. The, into the pit. Last night, we questioned things. Yep. Right. Yeah. Houses of Horde. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Old yeah. hoodie fits the mood. You're not jonesing. Yep, yep, yep. Uh oh man, there's a thing. Oh uh, shit, it's it. Fazer's not here. There's a thing, and I pull it out of the thing, and there's a room in there. And I'm not used to finding parlors and ditches. All right, here we are. Is there a latch or something? Should you do a polite little knock? There might be friends in there. Damn, you could really go for some friends right now. Is there a protocol for approaching ditch window? Allow me to stop you there. I am a timeless being of the void, but even my patience has its limits. 
Fun mm. is fun, but this frivolous navel-gazing is no longer necessary. Come in from behind the shadow of that narrative text. It's so very hard to see your face. <sighs> you aren't sure where you are, and it's unsurprisingly a little nerve-wracking. You look over your shoulder at the window, you guess you just fucking came on through. The Alternian sky is framed by the edge of your dirt hole, and the knot in your stomach loosens a bit. Hopefully that means this is a two-way portal. Oh, my man. You turn to look at your surroundings, and oh, there's someone here. The guy you just heard, you assume. He doesn't look like any of the other aliens you've met. Oh man. One of y'all wanna be Doc? Uh... Craig? Oh, sure. I don't think my voice is... <laughs> is... fitting, sorry. Wait, wait. Oh, everything's just started moving. Earthquake. Oh, was oh, it yeah. moving? Yeah, a little, yeah. That was me. I, I was moving the window around. Oh, that explains it. <clears throat> you seem like a fancy man. Mm. Well, I'm not an alien. Or, no more than any of us are alien to each other. In fact, nothing is alien to me. The root concept behind that term is alienation. Being forced from which that, that is which natural. Nothing is unnatural to me. I look upon all realities as equally inviting and approachable. It's you, my dear, who are out of place. Hmm. I could see that even if I was not omniscient, which I am. Okay, so not an alien. With no horns or a cast sign, though, he's definitely not a troll. Whoever he is, he seems to be white. Just really white. And round, and his outfit is admittedly kind of dope. Yeah. Yeah. Craig, I drew inspiration from him when I was designing suit Craig for a kind of <laughs> <laughs> Looking at him really ramps up your friend thirst. He's just got mm. this quality about him that you've got to get with. You take a step toward him, almost without thinking about it. Oh, my apologies. That compulsion has become extraneous. Extreme. Let me take care of it for you. He snaps his fingers and your knees buckle. The force of the universe presses down on you like G-force. You blink and somehow he's there immediately, arms outstretched to catch you as you fall. He steers you to a chase lounge and you drape yourself weakly onto it. Please, have a seat. The emotional transition might be a tad uncomfortable, but I know you've handled worse. Oh, excuse me. You're quite the soldier. Allow me to do the first to say that I am very pleased with your work. I know knew exactly what you were going to do, of course. And most of your work was, in fact, my work. Regardless, congratulations are in order. What is this guy talking about? Your work? You try to parse what he's saying, but your body is still shaking from whatever he just did to you, and it's hard to think in here. You suddenly, sharply don't feel friendly toward him at all anymore, or toward anyone. The void left by that feeling is a freshly gaping horror. It's like who you thought you were caved in, caved in itself, a black hole of personality eating your body up from the inside. You try to pull your shit together. He seems like he means business. This is no time to lose it, no matter if your sense of self is shattering. When you truly reflect on yourself, you surely can't with any, you surely can't with any honesty claim to believe any of this was by your own making. Crash landing on a hostile alien world, surviving the impact, dragging around a half-broken body and somehow not immediately being eaten by some local fauna. Did you learn an alien language just by thinking about it very hard? Right. Malik said something about that. That you were speaking perfect Alternian. And it was kind of weird, but you just kind of accepted it. For no good reason. That's your whole deal. Your friends all accepted your quirks. That's what friends do. 
You say it to convince yourself as much as to prove it to him. So many trolls, so many fascinating aliens, and all of them wanted to know you. Did you really think you managed to get that on your own, on your own laurels? Were they all drawn to an indefinable thing, something, a je ne sais quoi, fucking French? Je ne sais quoi. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you. No, fuck you. Fuck you, my good sir! <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, this whole emotional arc. You got self-confidence. You grew as a person and helped others to grow. The white text guy doesn't make expressions, but you get the feeling he's looking at you pityingly. I find you sweet. I honestly do. I didn't in I don't intend to cause you emotional injury. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm just telling the truth, so I'm not an asshole. I never lie, you'll find. It isn't like you don't have admirable qualities of your own, of course. You've made quite the valuable vessel for me, and I appreciate that very much. I could not have done it without you. I am only joking. I could have done it without you. <laughs> it is just infinitely more fun to do it, do these things together, is it not? What things? What did he do? What did you do? You hope you didn't do something that would fuck over all your friends. Though when you try to think about them now, the bonds you felt before come up all twisted. Without the artificial friendship drive he'd given you pushing you around, you're not even sure what those memories are supposed to feel like. Damn. You close your eyes and breathe. You try to remember the way Polypa touched your face after you'd touched hers, her claws trailing, trailing down your cheek. How Tizia slept, trusting, as you kept watch. How Tagora gave you a chance when he saw something in you that you didn't even see in yourself. How, not that long ago, you got the chitter handle of an extremely friendly jade blood boy. Those moments are like the memory of warmth to you now. Blurry, cold, and out of reach. Was all of that nothing? Your heart is a chasm. Don't worry so much about it. I simply needed some dots connected. Some pieces in place for my next move. Choose whichever metaphor suits you. Whichever way you frame it, because of you, everyone will soon be in the right place. Shit, what have you done? Your head starts to spin and you think you might cry, so you pull your hood up over your head to block out the harsh green of the room. You try to imagine it still smells a little like Malik. It doesn't. It doesn't smell like anything, really. But you remember what it smelled like at first, and you hold on to that. It was real, you tell yourself. Your friends were real, and what you felt for them, and with them, was real too. You're so afraid for them, and as guilty as you feel for craving it, the fear just makes you need those feelings you felt before even more. You're clawing desperately for the euphoria of caring, of being cared for. Who cares if your hand was forced? You felt it, and it still mattered. Matters. You remember how you felt watching Chixie perform, bathed in light and righteous anger, and also how you drunkenly commiserated with her later when... No. That's not right. That didn't happen. Except, you still remember how hungover you were the next day. Just when you started making sense of things, the whole fucking world shifts under your feet again. You just can't keep up with all this moving real estate in your brain. Ah, yes. All of the resets. Annoying, but necessary. You are just... You are just indescribably bad at keeping yourself alive in one piece. And you weren't quite, uh, quite as adept at being befriending aliens to start out with. My intervention was necessary to keep you on the right path. Time and space mean very little to me, but I had to move quickly. And again, repeatedly. Swipe some incriminating note-taking here. Befriend an impressible young upstart there. Anger a Inspire some bandits. You know how it is. You have to throw the temporal spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. Huh. 
Inspire some bandits, asshole. Anger a collar bear, asshole. Jackass. I'm sure if you look back, you'll be able to see traces of my deft touch. Deft, huh? So a few memories may have slipped through the cracks here and there. Timelines tend to collapse in on each other if you aren't careful. Your ability to mentally withstand such an event, and so often, is a testament to my acumen in choosing you for the task. I even almost caught on a few times, or you even almost caught on a few times, which I must say I was not expecting. You almost listened to the silly little girl who likes to dress up in big coats and cause me trouble. Oh no. And as always, some bystanders end up caught in the crossfire. The one with the shovel, for instance. I doubt his mind will ever be the same. A pity. Asshole. Father. You sit up straighter and clench your hands into fists. Over the course of his pompous monologuing, you've moved past fear and grief and onto deep, globe-chafing rage. How dare he do this to your mind, to your friends' lives? What was so important that one white orb asshole had to fuck with the destinies of everyone you've grown to care about? There are answers out there, and you deserve them, and so you demand them. Adorable. Yikes. You shift on the chase lounge so as to better hide your famous legs from this creepy round <laughs> fucker. <laughs> Oh, calm down. All of you and your adherence to societal expectations and archetypes. Perhaps one day you could just learn to take a compliment. Besides, I was being condescending. It wasn't even a compliment. So you demand answers. He sighs theatrically. You aren't sure where the noise is coming from. He doesn't have a mouth. How is he even talking? How the fuck does anything work at all? I knew you would, but I find explaining myself would be incredibly tedious. Suffice it to say, I am a man with many boards and fields of play. Although there are countless ways to move the players around the boards, some are doubtlessly more entertaining than others. You were simply one pawn among many. I won't bore you with all the details. Doubtless you were... You are aware of the greater contextual framework of the story. The hell you are? You aren't aware of jack shit. Your head is full of question marks. Of course. How thoughtless of me. See, yet another unfortunate side effect of the limitless conversing with the narratively limited. He taps a thumb and, thumb and forefinger to his orb. Perhaps it would suit you better to understand gradually. When I say gradually, please understand that I mean it. You won't be leaving. Oh. But yes, I do believe this will clarify some things for you. This way, please. He opens adoring gestures inside. There's light coming from in there, but it still gives off the vibe of a dark closet door in an unfamiliar bedroom at 3 a.m. You're afraid, yeah, but you want to understand even more. You stand up and take a step, conscious of the movement of the muscles in your legs. With the rosy sheen of your friendship hypnosis or whatever the fuck he did to you gone, the sensation of moving your own body feels heightened. Important. Yours. There's probably a version of you that would try to turn him down, or that would fight or run or take a nap on this surprisingly comfortable piece of antique furniture. You even consider rushing back to say goodbye to somebody, anybody at least, but you know there isn't time to click through all that bullshit. Those tributaries flicker in your mental periphery, so tangible you can almost see yourself choosing one, but you pull your focus back to the present and look him right in the orb. You just have to trust they'll remember you, because the you you've become after this journey, and after all the... the and after... after all this friendship and growth and death and time, that you needs to understand. You owe it to your friends, but even more, you owe it to yourself. You found your river, and you're going to see where it leads. So you follow him. Sit here, please. 
In the interest of expediency, I will leave you to your own devices while I go deal with an expected but entirely unwanted guest. It shouldn't be too hard to parse out the truth on your own. All you need to do is to read a brief webcomic. Cute. <laughs> oh! It opened Very... Homestuck. <laughs> oh, wow! It auto-opened Homestuck in my browser. <laughs> well, oh, not yet. That's later on the schedule, friend Sam. Wait, is it. that just the end? <laughs> that was the end. That was the, that was the epilogue? That so was the epilogue. the epilogue. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. A post excellent. All right. But no, sorry, you guys. Sorry, viewers. We won't be doing, we won't be reading Homestuck on stream just yet. We still have to do Act 2 of Prince. Yeah, of, we um, gotta do Act two. Yeah. Oh, shit, oh, this dude. Was this was fun. Yeah. Very. I am I really like how that all ended. <laughs> that was very good. Yeah. <laughs> and Craig, your voice for Doc Scratch is great. Oh, hell I'll yeah. work on it more good so job. when we read it, it's even better. Oh, uh, yeah, because we will be meeting that man again. Yeah. Oh, wow. Doubtless <laughs> we'll see him a lot. That was something else. Mm. I... Oh... I have so many thoughts. This was such a good game. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that last image. Wow. <laughs> you read a short little <laughs> webcomic. Short. <laughs> Do we well, want to go you. sniff Mar uh, Marvis's pits? Not really. Uh, we also need Trixie's other end. Oh, yeah. We might want to do that before we read Homestuck, but like after <laughs> Act 2. <two. laughs> yeah. Or just do that on our own time. Yeah, I don't know. Sometime. Mm. Yeah, but Eventually. not today. We've been com We're coming up on four hours. Yeah, that was yeah. the highest slot stream yet, huh? Yeah. Let's do our end offs. Yeah. Let me... mm. Shill time. Shill time. Shill. Wait, no. Stream is not <laughs> starting. Stream is over. Um, but um. Yeah. yeah. Thanks everybody okay. for coming and joining us for the last of our Hive Swap Friend Sim Mondays. We will continue Homestuck Mondays. I think next week we're gonna start Act Two, huh? Yeah. Yes, next week we're starting Act Two of Hive Swap proper. And um if it's as long as Act One was, we might finish it in one to two videos yeah. as well. So um after that we'll be moving on to reading Homestuck proper, yes? Yeah. And that'll that'll be a while, so <laughs> that'll be a minute. That'll be a, a yeah. good big old chunk of content. Yeah. Um, We're gonna read that short little love comic. Yeah. Um we also do other stuff on this channel. Craig and Leo play Hylix every Saturday up until you know they end on that. No, so wasn't sure Sunday. Sunday? Was it Sunday? Sunday. Sunday. What was yesterday? Yesterday was Sunday. Oh my gosh, time. Yes, it's Monday. <laughs> Um, but yeah, they play Highlights every Sunday, and, uh, yeah, um, I also do Amori streams over on Twitch every Wednesday. Yeah. Sometimes Follow us on the Planetaria for constant updates on these. Yeah, yeah from it's, all it's, our streamers, uh, the three of us, plus Desmond. Jack. Jack, that's what I said, <laughs> is Jack. Um, His other name. than that. Um, we do archive everything over on the YouTube. Link so down sure below. That. Yeah. And uh, join the nice butt club. Buy a hoodie. Yeah. Red bubble. <laughs> I'm yeah. currently wearing my planetarium hoodie, and I'll 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 take the opportunity to plug this merch. This shit is so soft and comfy. Yeah. <laughs> is I'm. I'm, I'm always so happy to hear the quality's good. It's good shit. Hmm, I highly like... recommend investing in one. <laughs> but other than all that, I guess, are we done shilling? I, think I guess we're it. done. <laughs> it all still right. feels so weird that Fred Sims over. Thank you guys for joining us on this journey, but Homestuck's yeah. not over yet. Yeah. Until next Monday. Yeah. Until next time, everybody. Bye.
See ya.